What is up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Limited Resources. This episode number 468. My name is Marshall. I'm one of your Limited Resources and sitting, in this case, right next to me on my couch, and I can say this, is another one of your Limited Resources, the OG himself, Ryan Spain, back on the show for a special episode about MTG Arena. Ryan, welcome back. Thank you so much, Marshall. Good to be here. Hello, everybody. Great to be back. Yeah, we decided to uh, to give Luis the week off. You know, he's an extraordinarily busy human being. So I thought, I'll just have Ryan come over. Ryan lives, you know, 10 minutes away from me. And uh, we'll let Luis <clears throat> run rampant with his stream and, and all the stuff that he's doing. So we've got Ryan back for this show. And uh, we're going to be focusing this show on, well, the product that you've worked on for the past what, three years or whatever it ended up two, being? Yeah, two, two, two years, year, last couple of years, although not since, um, since July. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, my, I've not been working at Watsi since, uh, since July. Yeah, so. a lot of people didn't know that. Yeah. Um, but you're kind of doing your own thing now. Yeah, I am. I had, you know, um, I spent the six greatest years of my career at Wizards of the Coast, uh, but I was there for a little over seven. Mm -hmm. So it's time for a change. And, uh, it's been a good one for me right now. Um, I've been uh, uh, spending a lot of time with the family and working on a house, which has needed a lot of work, but I have a lot of extra time to work with as well. And I've been you know, playing a lot of Arena and talk to you about coming on to talk about it. And also, uh, I'm going to start streaming Arena. I've been doing some, some, some test streaming, uh, but under the Going Optimal Twitch account, I'm going to be streaming weekdays at 10 a.m. for mm -hmm. the foreseeable future. So you can come check that out. Yeah, you're, you're getting your, your hands into a whole lot of different stuff. That's just one of them. So yeah. we'll talk about that um, near the end of the show as well. Uh, but for now, let's take care of business, and then we'll get right into the, to the arena stuff. So first things first, this show is brought to you, as always, by our friends at ChannelFireball.com. That's a place to go for everything you need magic-related on the Internet. If you need it, they're going to have it, single sealed product, whatever it is. <clears throat> they'll have it over at CFB. You can order Ultimate Masters. You can order, uh, you know, Guilds of Ravnica if you're doing drafts for that with your friends. And, uh, of course, they're going to get it out to you quickly, and they always stand by their product. That's just a few of the reasons why we love ChannelFireball.com. Please do check them out. You can also support the show directly via the Patreon. You can just go to patreon.com slash limited resources to check that out. And uh, you get entered into a bunch of stuff kind of just automatically by being a patron, including our uh, Playmat giveaway, which I've got here. And Ryan, did we ever remember what this card's name is? This is a Metamorph? sweet one. Phyrexian yeah, yeah, Metamorph. Phyrexian Metamorph. You did it. I have a uh, Grand Prix Vancouver, BC playmat here from 2015 with Phyrexian Metamorph, and that's a stunner, isn't it? Oh, yeah. yeah I've actually got, uh, I've got the, an oversized one of those. Yeah, the card. The, yeah, yeah, the, yeah. The, it's one of the one of the prizes I won at Watsi one time for a tournament. Yeah, yeah. I, I was there. Oh, that's right. We it was a team. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. right. It was I, a I won. <laughs> <laughs> but there was three objects that we won together, and yeah. my object was the oversized card. Yep. Um, but yeah, uh, so this play mat is going to go out to Lewis Talonin, all the way from Brentwood, Western Australia. Thank you, Lewis, for your support of the show, and uh, I'll figure out how to send this to you. <laughs> one way or the other. I don't really know how that works. Take it um, in person. Yeah. But again, if you want to be a part of the whole Patreon thing, patreon.com slash limited resources. Thanks to everyone who's on that for us. We really appreciate it. Um, we're going to skip crack -a pack this week, Rye, because I want to get right into business here and start talking arena with you. So sure. You know, also, if you do a crack -a pack with me, I'm just going to take the best Demir cards. So yeah. And which is probably <laughs> what I would do anyway. So we'll, we'll spare them. Um, but arena. Yes. So, this has kind of rushed onto the scene from our perspective. Right. I mean, from your perspective, probably not. But for us, it was like in some kind of sketchy alpha, and then it was in a closed beta that had some promise. And then all of a sudden, a couple months ago, it was like open beta, and you just anybody could play it. And it's like you, you start to see the reactions on Twitter and stuff. And I mean, I'll be honest with you, man, I was nervous. Sure. Because, you know, there's a lot of Magic's future riding on Arena. Right. When you just think about it, what was the one thing that everybody kind of just at a cursory glance at Wizards of the Coast said, say, three or four years ago? They said they need a better digital product. Magic Online serves its audience. I was a, you know, devout Magic Online user, but nobody was thinking that that was help bringing in new players or that was some great advertisement for the game, you know, from a streaming perspective or from a tournament perspective or any of those things. And it was like, that's the thing that's missing. 
Yeah, it serves its audience, but uh, it cuts off a lot of its potential audience. Too. Right, and and that's you know that's not good. Then all of a sudden, Arena came out, and I'm like, wait a minute. I'm like, this is good. Yeah, like, this is dang good. Like I'm playing this now instead of Magic Online, and it keeps getting better. And then I'm thinking, is it just me? And you know, I had a couple of chats with my a uh, couple of my friends that are pro players, and they were like, I don't know, I saw it before. You know, and it was okay, and I didn't, I didn't really like it. And I was like, I, people, you know, they, they trust my opinion to know that I'm not like the hyperbole guy. I'm not going to be like, it's awesome. You got to try this, unless I really think it is. And I urged a few of them, try it. Like, just for me. Like, maybe I'm crazy, and you need to tell me if I've drank too much Kool-Aid here. <laughs> and they came back, and they just said, dude, this is awesome. Like, wow. You know, like, I didn't... It's, it has you, exceeded you, my expectations. It's, it's classic game development cycle, really, is that you, you know, you spend a lot of time trying to find what's fun about your game, and then you get into the polish mode, and there's frequently just a lot of deal breakery things before mm-hmm. you've completed your polish, just like frustrating moments that just like, nope, you're not there yet, right? Yep, yep. Uh, and it's hard to name them all, or, you know, there's just a bunch of them, and yeah. then you... Uh, you hit uh, one, you know it. Yeah, and my... Uh, 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 <laughs> for, uh, my former boss uh, at, in R&D liked, uh, called them broken windows. Like, you can have a mansion from a distance that looks, looks solid, but then you get up close, and if there's a bunch of broken windows, you can get, it, it gets too much. And you yeah. start to fix those broken windows, and then it, um, it smooths out. Yeah, it's, it's, and you know, I, I don't know, I guess my faith wasn't particularly high. Like, you know, Magic Online, for what it was, changed a bit over the time. But from just a pure consumer perspective, like if I didn't know you, if I didn't know anybody or what was going on behind the scenes or any stuff at all, you know, I'm just like, well, Magic Online's okay, I guess. But it never really had any major thing where it was like, like Leagues was the one thing that really was like, okay, this is a game changer, right? Mm -hmm. But I mean, it never improved in the way that where you're like, let your imagination go. What would you like to see? And now we have Arena, and it's kind of like, that's kind of what I want to see. Like, you know, super graphical, super smooth, uh, you know, willing to take some moves to smooth out the gameplay, like the auto-tapping and stuff, but also not saying, but this isn't really magic, mm-hmm. right? Like, th- there isn't this little sort of, <laughs> you'll like this, but it's not really Authenticity magic. Authenticity has is been magic. A, a, yeah. a key word of the goals for the project from from the beginning. And your wariness was... Uh, Understand, understandable and expected by uh, everybody in the building. Uh, a different former boss of mine uh, about the arena project said, um, w- the, in kind of pitching it at the beginning, we have zero to one more times to uh, mm-hmm. succeed with people mm-hmm. on a digital front. Here. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. like the, some people are just done. Yeah, uh, but but it, some it, people will give it yeah, a shot. And if we can deliver yeah. here. This, you know, but we got to deliver here. Yeah. That was yeah. kind of the message. And, and <clears throat> so my point is, is arena. Like now all of a sudden I'm looking at this as like this huge opportunity for magic. Right. Mm-hmm. But I'm thinking about it in terms of having you come on the show. And I'm thinking about it from my listener's perspective. Right. Cause I'm going, all right, well, if this is going to be another way that we enjoy magic right now, there's kind of three ways there's live, there's magic online and there's arena. Right. Well, how do I? How do, how do I, I choose? maximize? How right. I, yeah. yeah. Like what's correct, and right. when I make that choice, what's correct within that system? Right. right. Because we we've had shows about that about Magic Online and about you know I even mention it during like I try to weave value into all the things I even mention it during our ads here on CFB. Usually at the end of the show, I'll remind people that they can sell their their real life rares back to CFB for plus thirty percent. Right. Mm-hmm. Hashtag branding. But at the same time. The reason that I hammer that point is because that is sick value, right? Like if you want to buy a box of cards and you have 15 rares that are sitting there that you're just not going to do anything with and they're going to rotate and plummet out, you know, turn that into a quarter of a box and trade in value, Mm -hmm. right? And like when you come onto a new system like Arena, which doesn't share anything with Magic Online, you know, Magic Online was a digital objects based platform, right? The economy was based on the fact that you're buying cards and keeping them to reflect real life. But Arena's not. It's throwing all that out the window. Mm-hmm. Yep. So I'm sure that our listeners, especially the ones that are already tried it, but even the ones that are thinking about trying Arena, are going to want to know, well, how does this whole thing work, and how do I maximize on this so that I can play the most for the least amount? Right. And let's get right into that. So uh, 
you know, we uh, we call these games free to play, mm -hmm. and that's important because it means that basically, if you're willing to put in time, eventually you can earn the currency needed to participate in the in all of the games uh, offerings, mm -hmm. uh, and. The, so that's actually where uh, going optimal came from. You were talking when we were talking about doing the show. Marshall mentioned, "Oh, people want to know how to go infinite on uh, yeah. on, on arena." And it's like we don't really go infinite on arena, and it's hard to go infinite on in anything like yeah. that. And it's more more it's less disingenuous to say going optimal. Yeah. Go. So that's where that came from. And so yeah, you know, I love that name. Yeah, it's, it, 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 I'm really you know glad I came up with it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm really glad you triggered me to come up with it. You know that goingoptimal.com was available. It's I, not I available now. Couldn't believe uh, that. Anyway, yeah. so um, the uh, the point though being that you can um, you can you can play for free. So, but what but how does but there's an economy. So what's going on here? And it's right. like for the limited player, it's very tough to to truly play. Uh, for free, for, so, forever to so, keep drafting so, for yeah. free. Or so I'll whatever. tell you right now: if you're a limited resources listener and you're only interested in drafting and you're not interested in um, paying for it, you I, I don't know what to tell you. Like the, the, you're going to have to pay. Well, you do know uh, what to tell them. You know, you're going to tell them how to do it for the least amount yes, of money. Right. But you will have to pay you, some you, money. You but that's fine. I don't think you, anybody listening is like I'm entitled to just free infinite drafts on Arena. Right. That's. Right. That, that, nobody would think that that's realistic, but what is realistic is to get that per draft cost down as low as possible. Right. So to get there, let's start by understanding what the pieces of the economy are. Mm -hmm. And first and foremost, you have the gold and gems. Okay. So in uh, in, in free to play games, you'll call this a, frequently a hard currency and a soft currency. And the soft currency, which in this case is gold, is called that because you can earn it in game uh, very consistently and and daily. It's just a very free flowing currency. Uh, but it's of limited use. You can't enter. And you everything. don't buy it. And you don't buy it. You never buy gold. You mm -hmm. only earn it. And um, uh, whereas gems are the hard currency, uh, which is you spend dollars to get it, and then uh, entry uh, events have entry in the form of gold or gems or just gems. So they're like in the case of uh, what we call front list draft products. So the current draft. Like yeah. if you want to do best two out of three competitive. Uh, Guilds of Ravnica draft, that's a gem cost. You mm -hmm. cannot enter, enter that with gold. So, and gold is what you grind. But if it's free to play, that's not fair. How do I, how do I ever play that if it's, it, well, and that's where the gold, the gold grind comes in. Uh, so there's, um, you've got this competitive best two of three gems only limited event. But the other type of limited event that's kind of rotates on a weekly basis, you got to look for, it, they'll, they'll do backlist uh, older sets sometimes, uh, is best of one. Uh, so the match is best of the one. The match is best of one instead of best of three. And you uh, play until you win seven times or uh, lose three times. And then those reward gems. So you can... And you can buy in for gold. And you can buy in for gold. So the, the, it's a, uh, you can buy in with gold, gold or gems. I think it's uh, 750 gems or 5,000 gold. And basically the grind in the game, if you just kind of play, and we'll get into quests in a second, but if you do everything the game is asking you to do, then uh, you're going to earn... You're going to get five thousand gold, you know, more more than once a week. You know, I think it's like every. This is something the econ team works out very much. Like, uh, if a somebody maxes player. out their gold, oh, yeah. when do they get enough for a draft? You know, so mm -hmm. they're thinking about that, and I believe it's in like the five day range if you uh, if you really okay. do it. So. But to max out gold, if you're not playing limited, you have to play constructed. So that's where it's like if you if you're free to play and you want to grind gold to get into your limited events, you gotta uh, play some constructed. But it's free. You know, you can just play uh, quick matches of of constructed. Oh, it looks like your quest might be something like uh, cast twenty five. Well, we should mention what a yeah. quest is. Too. Yeah, sorry. Um, so uh, the 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 ways you earn gold on a daily basis are through win bonuses and uh, quests. So win bonuses, just winning, just win, win yep. a game, and I think it's the first four are worth a lot. Like the the average, you know, I think it's like a hundred, then two fifty, then you know, it's it's the three figure type yeah. uh, rewards. And at for some point first. they drop down to like, 50 and then it drops to fifty gold yeah. up through fifteen wins. Right. So and just to put it in uh, in context. You know, you, you mentioned it, but to buy into one of those quick drafts, the, the best of ones is 5,000 gold. 5,000 gold, Right, yeah. so that's just like, so if you're earning 50, that's that's a very small amount. But if you're getting 250, like that starts to add up pretty quickly. Right, and then, and, and then we add on the quests, which are a big bump. 
because uh, every day, every 24 hours, uh, you get a new quest added to your system. And all quests either reward 500 gold or 750. And the 750s require more work. And it's just things like cast red spells, cast red or, you know, do the... And it, attack with this many creatures. Yeah, attack, it's sort of lands. arbitrary. It, it's kind of just like if you play... You may need to switch if you if you're doing constructed to complete quests. You want to switch your decks to match the colors that's being asked of you to cast. But since there's usually two colors, it's pretty easy. The main thing is there is that you can also click on a quest once a day to cycle it for a different one. So, may, so they will present you with a quest, and mm-hmm. you can say, "I don't want to do that." Or once I'm a not- day. Once a day, you can say, "I would like a different one, please. Give me a different job." Okay. And so let's say it's red black spells and you're like i don't have any red black decks i like and i don't even draft those colors i'm a celestia player and and it's 500 anyway which we don't we, we always want to go for the 750 so uh, okay that's that's why your first job when you log in is to check your quests and find a 500 to try and get to 750 i don't care if it's a 500 if it said like play 20 25 lands and you're at 24 of 25 lands and it's a 500 quest Go ahead and cycle it. It doesn't, you're gonna complete, if you, this is your for playing heavily. You know, like, if, and by heavily, I mean you're doing that, you're, you're playing until you win four times a day. Uh-huh. Like, if you're doing that, then you should definitely be even cycling ones that you've made progress Almost on. locked in. Because all you're trying to do is get plus 250. Because you're gonna do all those quests anyway. It doesn't matter that you're one away from completing that 500. If you swap it and get another 500, you'll complete that one too. It's, yeah. not, it's not a big deal. So the, the main thing is that you're trying to take your shots at the, okay. at the 750. So getting these 750s is one way that you can maximize on the gold that you're getting, mm-hmm. which then just to sort of, again, complete the picture, if you add up enough gold, then you can play a quick draft. Right. If you do well enough in the quick draft, that rewards you with gems that you normally have to buy for money. Mm-hmm. Then the gems you can use to buy into the competitive draft, which is kind of the pinnacle. Like that's right. the that's assuming that most of our audience, that's where we want to be. That's where you're drafting, you build your deck, you play best two out of three matches with sideboarding, and it's just magic like you would expect it in, in any other setting. Yeah, so okay. I'll call them single drafts just as a code word uh-huh. for it, and because they don't even name it in the system, it's no, like, it, just it doesn't draft. have a good name. But there's com- I, I call them quick drafts, but I don't know. You sure, let's do that. Fine, yeah. we'll call them quick drafts and competitive drafts yeah. just to differentiate between best two of three and best of one. Yeah, and specifically, what I want to call, especially to you, Magic Online players, is that quick draft is effectively the Swiss of uh, yes. of arena, and competitive is is the uh, is the competitive and, and Swiss meaning. Flatter payout. Flatter payout. And less payout. Yeah. Less payout and flatter payout. In Swiss on Magic Online, you get a pack per win, right? And so, mm-hmm. like, you, you can't... Whereas if in the competitive, you, if you win the whole event, you get eight packs. Whereas if in Swiss, you get three, right? Yeah. So it's about the steepness of the of the curve and, and we of should, the payout. And we should mention that what some of the payout uh, thresholds look like for the quick drafts that we yeah. talked about. So To get an idea of... Yeah. So, again, you can win up to seven times, but if you lose three, you're out, yes. right? Yes. And if you get to your sixth win, mm-hmm. of course, before your third loss, you'll get 850 gems for that. Uh, you'll get 650 gems for your fifth win. So that's kind of where things start to... That's the, 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 the plus EV line, yeah. That's right. And, and then it's seven wins will get you 950 gems, right. which is... Almost two thirds of the way. Yeah, to, uh, you're fifteen fifteen hundred gems to play in competitive. Uh, yeah, and, and, and where's that? Oh, and I want to call out. You know, so we call I call these uh, uh, win loss gated events. You know, mm-hmm. the, the un- Magic Online or like in a tournament, you're playing a certain number of rounds, right? Mm-hmm. You don't even know how many matches you're going to play in a, an arena event because it ends when you've won or lost a certain number. But it's a tricky thing because uh, so in the in the quicks. You have a seven win max and a three loss max. And a lot of people will take that and go, what, I just need to go seven and three? I can go seven and three. That's easy. Mm -hmm. That's not it. You can't hit three losses before you get seven wins. So you can never be seven and three. You can only be seven and two. And so when you start doing your math of, look, I can totally go blah and blah when you're thinking about arena, shave off one of those losses when you're thinking about it or, or you're kind of fooling yourself. That's great. Now, we should also mention for the competitive drafts, what those look like. So we mentioned it's 1,500 gems to buy in with no uh, option to buy in for gold. Right. Right. And these, though, are five wins or two losses, whichever yep. comes first. And they're best of three. So you get mm-hmm. as much. We've tried to find so that both You're events. You're playing a lot. Both events offer a similar amount of magic. Yeah. It's just that you need to do fewer match wins in the competitive. Right. Uh, and the And the cutoff for this is... If you get your third win mm-hmm. before your second loss, 
that's a break even point. Yeah. You actually will get your 1500 gems back. And by the way, for all of these, you get gold thrown in. Gold just comes to you. Like it, well, the, 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 actually, the, I don't think the prizes for uh, these events, these are gems and packs only. Uh, oh, the gold is for winning? Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll touch, Sorry. I'll touch very I, briefly I, on well, Constructed you do get right gold. It you, just must be win bonuses that I'm thinking of. Yeah, it's only win, yeah, it's win bonuses. Okay. Yeah, they pop up after the game. You think, oh, I'm earning gold, but yeah. that's just from the win bonuses. I see. Okay, and I, the Constructed events, uh, which you can... Have, it, we, are, we don't use that word on this. Yeah, so well, okay. just briefly, if you like that other way to play Magic... <laughs> Those are gold in, gold out events. So the only reason to play them is you love constructed and or you're so good at it that it's plus you're you're making gold when you mm -hmm. play it. So yeah. if you love to do it and doing it makes gold for you, great. Then do it. Uh, but but yeah. if you're the limited only player, you don't even need to look at constructed events. And again, just to complete the, the picture here on the competitive draft, again, 1,500 gems to buy in. Your third win will get you your 1,500 back. To max out, if you do go five and one in this case, mm -hmm. or five and zero, oh, uh, you get twenty one hundred gems. So you, if you get that fifth win, you're profiting six hundred gems. Yep, it's a pretty big deal. Although yeah. the big leap is two to three, because if you win twice, you get uh, seven fifty, and if you win three times, you get the full buy in back yeah. of, of, of fifteen hundred. Yeah. So and like you know, we talk about going infinite, and if you can get to that third win before your second loss consistently, you're at least break even. Yeah. Yep, that's a big. That's that is your goal, right? Yep. When you and you want to hit a few fours and fives when you can, so that they offset your uh, ones, and twos. ones and twos and yeah. zeros that maybe happen to somebody, but not me ever. It's, it's happened to me. Okay, maybe me too. But. On, on stream. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, magic variance, okay. you know. I can't lie. <laughs> So yeah, so uh, the the um, that's basically the cycle of of currency mm -hmm. of, of of monetary style currencies. Uh, one thing we that you also get in all of this that we didn't even bother mentioning is booster packs. That's right, and that's it, it's funny because they're very irrelevant to us in the discussion of how this values for the limited player, and we'll get into that as we move on to the next phase of the economy, which is like what are how do you acquire cards and what, what's going on? Yeah, so let's you know, talk let's talk about that right now. Yeah, so. Other games like Hearthstone employ what they call a dust system, mm -hmm. right? Where you can take a card and turn it into some, I guess it would be gold in this case. Is that, or is dust its own? Uh, anyway, whatever. Yeah. I don't care about Hearthstone. But th my point is. It's literally you, directly into cards. You turn, you turn, okay. d you have a number of dust. You uh -huh. have this many dusts. Yeah. And then you, and to make a, to make a card of this rarity costs this much of that currency. Right. Right? Okay. So that's kind of become industry standard because of that, of Hearthstone's uh -huh. success. Yeah. yeah. And that seems like a very reasonable system to put forth, but that's not the one that Arena has. You cannot take cards in your collection and turn them into anything else. You can't trade them. You can't turn them into some third currency. You can't turn them into gold or gems. You are just stuck with them. And as it comes with booster packs, it's similar. They're, yeah. they're non-transferable. They're non-liquid. You, you, you don't do anything with them. But there are systems in place in the background that are actually doing that for you. Yes, there, there are. So this was super controversial. We knew it was going to be. I fought hard to not uh, just copy the um, Hearthstone system. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and, and Eric Lauer and I worked on this together. Eric Lauer is, uh, one of the, uh, is the lead uh, designer in R&D. Uh, uh, their roles change, whatever. He's a, he's a very important person to what's on the front of Magic Cards, right? And uh, we were talking about how Hearthstone is really, like, this needs to be an acquisition tool. Note that Wizards killed uh, Duels of the Planeswalkers. That's not that was that was our digital acquisition tool, and part of the and it worked and it worked and part but but it didn't work enough for our existing players, right? Like the, yeah. there was this I didn't play and, and like people got stuck there, and there was like, like it was a good almost like. Proof of concept. Proof of concept, yeah. but we need to figure out how to get out of that walled garden yeah. of Duels of the Planeswalkers and get into a more fully featured kind of version of that, right? So that was kind of the the but. As an acquisition tool, like Magic is so complicated. It's just difficult to get people over the barrier of how to play the game. And every little complexity and decision that you add on top of that for someone we're trying to be, turn into a Magic player uh, compounds the difficulty of that task. Mm -hmm. And destroying Magic cards, or you know, destroying cards in your collection, let's go to Hearthstone, uh, forget Magic. Destroying cards in Hearthstone doesn't feel good. Mm -hmm. And as a light Hearthstone player, like I'm a great model of the of the person that we're trying to appeal to with this in Magic on the Hearthstone side because I don't know those cards. I go in there and like 
I know I want a second copy of this cool rare for this deck I'm working on. I've got some stuff to dust. But you don't I, want to dust the wrong thing. I don't want to dust the wrong yeah. thing. So it makes me want to go to Reddit. Like when a system makes you want to leave the game to go check Reddit to see if you're doing the right thing, then there's a problem with that system. Yeah. And um, while a lot of experienced Magic players love collection management yeah. and love the nitty gritty of like, ooh, I'm going to kill that. Like that's actually fun for a lot of people. It is not fun for new players. It is just not. I don't like and, it. And, 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 and not a lot it's of fun. It's a time thing for It's me. a time thing. It's I mean, like, I was always terrible at it on Magic Online. Right. And, and nobody I'd let cards just sit there for months and it's like, yep. oh, I should be selling these or trading them or whatever. My role on the team was in systems design, which is to say the stuff going on not on the battlefield, not the game of magic being played, but all the stuff around it. And I always said that my goal for my systems was that you spent as little time there as possible. Yeah. Like, they it just happened. Yeah. So let's, so let's get into the details. Right. So, so, so that's, instead, that's of, your broad philosophy, but what, it, what actually ended right. up happening? So, so what ended up happening is instead, uh, so in Hearthstone, you, you choose what you want and you turn it into this currency that becomes cards that you want, that becomes, you know, magic dust of whatever you want. The arena system is wild cards. And what that says is that sometimes in a pack, you get a, a wild card that's a mythic, it has a rarity, so a mythic, rare, rare, uncommon, or common wild card. And it replaces that rarity object in that booster pack and uh and then that can be traded for any card in the system and uh once once yeah you you, you get a mythic rare you can turn that to any mythic rare on the in the right. game and uh so in effect that is dust like what a lot of players don't see it's is, reverse is that dust. wild cards yeah. are dust they are dust they're just dust that we give you up front mm -hmm. like uh, like imagine if uh, hearthstone said um Pretend you're, you can dust all your cards, but we're gonna we'll let you keep them. We're just gonna give you the dust. Mm -hmm. That's kind of what's happening here, except not at that generous of a rate. I'm not pretending mm -hmm. that Wizards is just giving away the farm or anything, but the point is um, that, in a sense, rather than make you destroy that card and then get something out of it, when you acquire that card in the first place, we give you a little bit of it. And then eventually, like, you get this chance at a wild card. And so we're kind of extracting the dust from cards as you open them and then turning them into these wild cards and so this does two great things for um for for the newer players especially uh it doesn't make you have to figure out what to destroy but it's also very clear what the trade-off is if you have marshall you have 700 dust in arena what can or in uh hearthstone what can you get with that right who knows who knows yeah marshall you have one rare wild card yeah. on arena what do you get for that yeah i can like, get whatever i want yeah a rare yeah right? it's very clear and that the the um so there's now, what been, about the vault thing though yeah so then uh so the, another problem is like oh well it's really frustrating i bought I, f to get a fifth you know a copy of a mythic or something and I don't need it. I already have four and that goes that is auto dusted kind of behind the scene So any time that you get more than four copies of any card. Yeah, it does not stay in your account, right? But there's a little meter Yep. that runs in the background yep. for every one of those cards that goes into they call it your vault mm -hmm. When the meter gets full you get wild cards. Yep You get uh, a mythic two rares and three uncommon wild cards and, and that just happens automatically. That just I don't happens automatically. It. You don't think, you know, just, just a little surprise that happens every now and again. It doesn't take away these various feel-bads that are happening. And we'll get into another one that you're yeah, feeling. Yeah, I'll bring that up yeah, in a sec. So it's like, um, but, the, the, but because of all this, um, because you can't actually turn cards in your collection into any other new value in the system... They are a dead end for anybody who just wants to play limited. Yeah. It's a really so, weird thing about the game. Let's talk about that now because th this relates to what we just referenced as well, mm -hmm. which is that I just want to draft. Right. right. That's all I want to do. I want to do competitive drafts on this. That's all I, and I've been doing it nonstop. I, I haven't played Magic Online in weeks. Wow. I, I, it's weird. I just, when I sit down to play, the, the programs are right next to each other on my computer, and I'm always just like, I just want to play Arena. Imagine if I told you three years ago. In three years, you're going to look at me and say, Zero. I haven't played Magic Online I mean, I still <laughs> have a... I still love Magic Online. Yeah, I do too. You know, but I just... Like, I can't justify... Like it's got the uh, modern cube on it right now. I'm yeah, yeah, and I and, and I'll do that. You know, it mm -hmm. does have stuff that I can't get. But even then, I'm you know, I'm really enjoying Ravnica anyway, so whatever. But, um, But what ends up happening for me is... I've never cashed in a wild card. I have never used my gold. I have 
seventeen thousand gold or something on my account because it just accumulates. But it's I don't more spend. Than that. Okay, seventy-two thousand. Yeah, probably whatever. seven hundred and seventy thousand. So, so, somebody, somebody said it on the stream. Like, must be nice to have all that gold. And I'm just like, I've never even looked at that number because the events I want to play only take gems. Yeah, because you don't like best of one. Right. And all the gold right. only. And events. I'll play it. I'm not. I'm not saying it's terrible, but like but again, you, you it's my options, spare time yeah. when I sit down. I look at the button and I say, "That's the one I want to do," because I want to play. You know, quotes real draft. And you know, I, I, my assumption is that down the line. Uh, when arena is available on more platforms like mobile platforms or whatever uh, if that comes to be that that's when i'd want to do a quick draft like i'm in line at the store and i'm like okay i'll just play a quick round and i'm not stuck in for you know up to three games and sideboarding and all that but anyway the other thing that happens is i win packs right i get booster packs as part of the rewards on arena yep and the problem is that you don't use those to draft Nope. Right. For me, I'm just like, well, those aren't because they're not actually booster packs. All they really are is just eight cards of specific rarity at random. It's a container of cards you can't do anything with. Right. Other than play so constructed. Those then accumulate for me. And the, the, my, my stream always laughs at me because I'll go like, because they always want me to open packs because they know that I don't like to do it normally because I like to draft with my packs or play pack wars or do sealed or do a chaos draft or whatever. And, you know, I kind of have it as part of my thing that I'm like, you know, this came from you. I mean, mm -hmm. you're the one that taught me this. And, you know, <laughs> a, so I a say... A sealed like, booster has value. It has it, value. But sealed doesn't. Right. And yeah, But these aren't really a sealed booster because I can't use them for draft and they're not even the 14 card and boosters that's the that key. we expect. Don't think of them that way. Right. And so I... And, and so... But the thing is, is they accumulate. Mm -hmm. Like, the stream talked me into opening some. I had 172 booster packs of Guilds of Ravnica. And I'm just like... Can I not just turn these into another draft or something? Because if I open them, they go into my collection that I don't currently use. And if I want to play Constructed on Arena, then I would, and I'd be glad I had them. But right. currently, I've just been wanting to draft, and I don't expect that to change, you know, dramatically. Dramatically. And so, if that's the case, why can't I just take these packs and and dust them or turn them to gems or gold or something? Right, and that's that's a totally that's natural feeling, mm -hmm. and that's what people feel about their extra cards. That's what people feel about a lot of the the resources that are stuck that way on Arena. Mm -hmm. And I, I want to I'll make an analogy that, that like there's the economy, and think of that as the engine of your video game, especially your free to play game. And an engine has takes in some fuel and spits out you know, torque or whatever, and there's an efficiency to it. How good is it, how good is it at converting the fuel thing to torque? In. Mm -hmm. And with a thing like a free-to-play game, you're saying, well, how good at it is it taking money and turning it into entertainment? Or, mm -hmm. You know, it, it, and... So my time my being feeling like I'm doing what I want to do with it, right. that kind of, is that my output? Yeah, or, okay. or for, 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 from an econ team standpoint, there, that's from your standpoint. Yeah. From, from an econ team standpoint, working on a free-to-play video game, they are working on an engine with a target efficiency. Like there's a there's a business that they have. They're reporting to people who are saying, "There's money." Yeah, we want to make. We need to make this amount of money. So let's model player behavior. Oh, there's the, like these these deep spreadsheets that that with showing how players are going to behave, and we do model these players, and we understand this, and we predict that this is how they're going to play, and if they spend this much, it's going to produce this, and so our average users will be. There's all these like it's the it's what drives the game industry really is the stuff that's going on at that level at this point because it's what it's where the money is, it's right? About it's, a, it's about the money. Uh, and so what I want players to understand when they're giving feedback like what you just gave, which is totally legit feedback. Mm -hmm. It feels bad to have yeah. these packs, and I want them to be valuable for something else. That's two very distinct different f pieces of feedback. One of them is useful. One of them is less useful. Um, so the f two pieces being it feels bad... And the other piece being, I'd like to be able to exchange these. Yes. Okay. Because I'd like to be able to exchange these is the, I always say most, most feedback from gamers, especially magic players about an economy or whatever can be boiled down to, I would like to spend less to play your game, please. Mm -hmm. That's great. Everybody making games knows that you want to spend less to play it. Um, that's where the econ folks are going to figure that out. So if you get what you want, like don't, but the other, the thing that's legit is that it, it feels bad, right? Mm -hmm. Like they could change it. It, it could. You, I mean, I've been trained my whole right. life to value booster packs. You, right. right. So wizards could hear that feedback and be like, okay, players like Marshall are experiencing a real feel bad in this moment. We should 
let's figure out how to give them how to how to take that away and give him some value. So yes, now you can change in um, fifty unopened prize boosters for one free draft entry. That's going to come from somewhere else. The engine will keep its efficiency. So you might get that fix that makes you feel better about the feeling of that economic transaction, but don't fool yourself into thinking that uh, if the company delivers on this change that you're asking for, that it's going to be better EV for you. Because what they're gonna do is say, okay, well, we're gonna be a little stingier over here, a little stingier over here, and the net result is the efficiency of this engine is the same. Mm -hmm. But in keeping the efficiency of the engine the same, we made Marshall feel better about these booster packs in his collection. And mm -hmm. those are iterations that they will absolutely continue to look at and maybe take on. Okay. Yeah, so when you give your of, feedback, mm -hmm. absolutely give feedback about this part of the economy system just felt bad to engage in. That's worthwhile feedback. But just don't think that correcting that uh, problem is going to mean, free is going to mean money for you. Yeah. It's just going to come from somewhere else in the system. Yeah, it's and just, that's the it's thing with really... dust, and, dust versus wild cards. Everybody got all up in arms about uh, wild cards versus dust. It's whatever. It's all about an engine with a certain amount of efficiency that generates cards for you. Yeah, and you can tell how it feels. But in the end, don't think that... Well, yeah. yeah. And, 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 just, and I did learn some lessons from this, though, because, yeah. you know, you and I had a chat about this before, which said, which we said, hey, we should take this onto the show. Mm -hmm. But a couple of the things that you brought up before we ended that discussion were pretty eye-opening, um, which was you asked me if I felt, you know, basically if I felt like I was getting a bad deal or if I was unhappy with, the, you know, like, am I spending too much on gems or, you know, do, do I feel like I'm not getting enough back? And I'm like, no. I, I, I felt fine. You know, I bought gems a couple of times, but I've been able to go optimal, right? Mm -hmm. not, not infinite, but, you know, I, I figure I'll have to buy gems once every three months or so. You know, and I, and I made a mistake that we'll talk about here. I, I didn't actually buy the maximum amount because uh, I just didn't know what right. I was going to need or whatever. But, you know, my point being, no, I, I've gotten a lot of magic out of those two $50 purchases over five months or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. Like I have played in, I play every day on it now. I'm just on arena every single day, you know, and, and I've only had to buy in for like a hundred bucks total. I'm like, dude, I would have paid double that, you know, for the entertainment that I, I, I would have paid five X that, you know, because you can't get this. Like I don't get this out of TV. Right. right? Then the other thing that you brought up was what if you just didn't have those packs? What if you just never saw them? You did the same winning that you were doing in these drafts yet. It never showed you booster packs. It just, you didn't see them. They're not in your collection. They just never existed. How would you feel? I'd be like, I'd be fine. Right. Because I'm getting gems back, which is what I actually care about, because that's what gets me into new new drafts. It's only when I click on that packs thing, and it says 172, and I'm thinking like, man, I have like three or four boxes worth of, you know, because I, again, these aren't actually booster packs in the sense that we, but they look like them, they're called that, mm -hmm. yet in real life, that's a very valuable thing to me. A booster box is a draft with my friends. It's the chance to open up some money rares. It's a sealed deck or, you know, whatever. And in, on there, it's just packaged. It's a different thing packaged. So right. I've had to kind of like, you know, look at it in terms of like, I'm not actually unhappy with where things are at. It just feels bad seeing all that stuff. Because of all these things you've had in place and because of yeah. human psychology. And yeah, that's the, that's the, the, the designers and econ teams work together to have uh, human psychology meet uh uh, engine efficiency <laughs> uh -huh. in a in a place that works together, but it's difficult. That's why everybody has these jobs, and that's yeah. why games change also, all the time. Also, this is in beta. I mean, I, I'm right. not up in arms about it. I just right. look at it as this is a problem for me perpetually, right? Because and I'm a limited only player. Like I'm not actually. I do play a little constructed, but like let's just assume I was. I just like to draft. When I go on an arena, that's what I want to do. I just want to draft. There's a lot of people like me. Our listener base proves that, mm -hmm. right? And and not that our listener base are all exclusive limited only, but I mean, you know, there's obviously a market for right. for limited in Magic, and we've shown that through this podcast. And like these people are going to be going. I have all these stupid booster packs. I have all these cards that are just disappear. You know that I just have nothing to do with, and it just doesn't feel good. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the limited. By the way, right. should, should we we should mention? I don't know if we did before about the buying the gems. Oh yeah, I think I mentioned it. Like okay, if you just double down yeah, on to, that. to go on the, the basically, if you are a purchasing player, if you, and assuming you're a limited player, you're gonna be, and you can afford it, you should be saving up to buy your gems in hundred dollar chunks. In fact, there's this one time five dollar um, value bundle that you can buy uh, only once as a new player, 
And they that that's all games have that kind of system in order to get your credit like to get Prime you comfortable pump. with the idea of spending money on this game to give you a great bargain to do it. But you uh, you you can do it. But it's ironic. I haven't. I still haven't taken advantage of that deal because it gives you booster packs and gems. And I don't care about the booster packs, and the gem rate, even on that uh, Super Dual Welcome deal, is worse than the rate at, uh, at, 100. at 100. So um, the, uh, there, the, if you don't care about Constructed, there's no reason to buy anything other than gems in $100 chunks unless you are um, uh, super budgeted. Okay. Uh, but, but so save bit. up and, and try to buy them you know, thinking yeah. long term. And if you are super budgeted and are looking at this with more like free to play, I would buy that, you know, find, you yeah. know, save the five bucks and at least get the $5 package because it'll give you some gems to work with. You get some extra limited and it's worth it for that little boost. You yeah. Know? So, um, and cause we want to talk about, uh, strategy. Yeah. Let's right? move on to that. Too. Yeah. I want <laughs> to move on to that, but before we do, I just, I like to recap these things sure. because since this, this is new. So we just mentioned, you, you just said, okay, if you're going to be a limited only or a limit, primarily limited player on Arena and you're going to be, you're going to be spending some money. Mm-hmm. It, I found that the per draft cost, which I haven't actually done the math on, but I mean, like I said, I've played for literally months on like basically $100, yeah. 100 non-efficient dollars, by the way. And I won't make that mistake again, but um, that's fine. But what if you are a... You're, you're in college, mm-hmm. you, you know, you, you're, you're trying to make the, the bills, you know, you don't have a great job yet, or you're, you're younger, you don't even have a job right now, right? You've got very limited budget to work with. Um, what does that look like for a limited player? Uh, well, then what, what's the circle of life for them? You do really they, need to participate in con- Constructed. If you're good, if you're, if you're, and if you like, um, if you're okay with the best of one, like... I, well, I'll, you have a, to be. A quick aside on, on the best <laughs> of one. If you don't have money, you have yeah, to. Yeah, but on, on that, like... Uh, say, go ahead and save your gold. Eventually, some format will rotate into that um, best of one slot that you just love, and that's the time to say, "All right, okay. I'm gonna, okay. I'm gonna." That's your aside. Yeah. But again, I'm yeah. a free player. <laughs> yeah. What does the circle of life look like for me? If let's just say I buy the five dollar intro thing, but I am not going to be spending a hundred dollars on this anytime soon. Right. Let's say you're out of that. You're just yeah. you're back down to to grind levels. So then yep. you're in the spot where I was talking about earlier of like basically getting a, a free to play a, a single uh, a quick draft once a week ish, a little under from if, grinding up gold. Yeah, from running up gold. You just uh, do your daily quest, uh, cycle to your seven fifties if you by can by playing constructed. By playing constructed, and and the um, there are constructed events that require gold to buy in, and you get gold out. And again, if you like events and are good, that can be positive EV. But you know that you have to be better. Like someone 50-50 is not coming out of that queue with more gold than they started. You have to be a much better than 50-50 player to earn money in those queues. What I do... um, because I'm uh, is when I feel it is just jump into the the ladder. Like basically, if you uh, if you hit the big play button on the lower right, a uh, panel slides open that showed you kind of all your play options, even ones that aren't on that main menu. Uh, and there there's a ladder. You know, there's a, there's a play mode there that's uh, I think competitive and uh, you know there's advanced or yeah. something. Yeah. Basically, you just want to enter an event. You just want to uh, play a one off ladder event, and you choose a deck that uh, matches the 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 quests that you're trying to complete for the gold. And but that's your that's your primary method to actually getting into a draft queue is yeah. to uh, hit your daily quest for gold, and then if you're good enough or profitable enough at, with the constructed debt that you have, grind gold up that way. Yeah, and then you'll get to play quick drafts, which aren't quick. You can win up to seven times. I right. mean, you could play theoretically nine That's why matches. they killed that name. I mean, early on yeah. in the beta, it was called Quick Drafts, but again, there, things are hard to name. Like, yeah. it just didn't it's actually the, the right game thing. that's quick because yeah, it's best of one, it's but it's not one. the draft. Right. Yeah. And, and then over the course of a few weeks, if you do well enough in those, you'll end up with enough gems to actually play a competitive draft. Right. And then that's kind of that's your life, yep. right? You're, you're, you're hitting your daily quests. You're picking your spots to earn gold with a constructed deck, and you're getting to draft uh, for free. Yep, uh, probably uh, on, you know once a week or two or whatever it is that you. However yeah, three you times every two weeks on the quicks, and then hopefully you earn enough gems from that to uh, to, to, to temper in a competitive. Competitive, and then man, and if, hey, and if, if you, you can three to... plus win the competitive, right. then you're then you're staying up there for a while. Right, but it's very difficult. You know, like you yeah, can't, to, you're not going to do that forever. Yeah, um, that, that's why. So like I've been playing since uh, the the wipe in September almost daily. 
I bought the hundred dollar thing uh, and I am twenty five dollars into it. I yep. still have uh, three quarters of my gems. I have four complete uh, tier one standard decks, and I have played countless, countless, countless hours yeah. of limited. Well, you wait till your stream starts making you draft five color gates above everything else, and we'll <laughs> see how that goes. Okay. Um, all right. So let's move on now, because I just I wanted to put a recap on the yeah. uh, on the two types of use cases that I see for our listeners, which is I'm willing to pay, I want to draft, and I want to do it here, buy gems in a hundred dollar chunks. And then the other group, which is like, I don't have very much money right now, but I really want to get into this. And that's the grind grind your daily quest so that you can play quick drafts and then eventually make your way up to the advance. Yeah, and your mileage is going to vary based on your your win percentage of as course, well. So keep, of course, so, that's huge. Yeah, that's um, huge. But I would say that the same win percentage on Magic Online and Arena is going to be a better monetary value for your entertainment on Arena. I agree. But, also... If if you are fifty percent on Magic Online, you are probably sixty on Arena. Like yeah. the 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 skill level varies greatly right now. It's all over the map. Yes, and that will t- tighten though as well. Definitely, like, I, I am enjoying this a early. A huge stage. different part of the the free to play model, and especially uh, Arena versus uh, Magic Online, is that matchmaking in both limited and constructed is doing its darndest to try and get you to a fifty fifty matchup. That's what it's trying to do. Um, in, in, in limited, that's weird because you think, well, it should just be based on record. And that's true to an extent, but basically the idea there is you, um, you get early on in like 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0 type matchups. It, uh, it looks at rank. Uh, it leans towards rank because we'd rather have, um, you mean my rank as a player? Yeah, I don't even know what that is. Yeah. We'll get into that next. Okay. Maybe, maybe we should do that before strategy even, cause it's pretty quick, but okay, basically, hit it. yeah. So, so rank, you have a, sorry, you have a, um, uh, you have a constructed and a limited rank in the game, and right now they do they mean nothing other than I can't figure it out at all. I, well, mine hasn't changed in two months. Yeah, this it is, just goes up and down like a little tiny bit. Yeah. So and, and partly so this is this is a system I was working on um, before I left, and maybe there was uh, you know they didn't get a lot of love uh, after I was gone because it's not essential to the thing being fun. No. I want to be clear. I don't even like, care about yeah, it. I right. just don't like, know what it's it It's something we need eventually. Like, you need to be have friends. There's all these things you need, but the only thing you need to have fun is smooth, clean, authentic magic, Gameplay. right? Yes. So that's what's yes. been the focus. And these things will all get better. Uh, but there's kind of stubs, you know, like, like partials in place for a lot of these things. And I would call the state of ranking right now is kind of a stub. Yeah. The way that ranking is used in classic uh, games out there right now is seasonal rewards. You have a season where you march upward towards a, uh, to get as high as you can on the, on the, the ranking. And then where the highest point you finished at in the season generates some reward for you. Maybe it's just cosmetic. Maybe it's like a new avatar or something. But like there is something economical or something in the prize reward economy happening there. But that's just not set up yet. Right now, all it is is a test, a kind of a proof of concept of the way we, that the system is measuring the quality of players. And I'm sure a ton of it is going to change. Because like another problem is it like, well, it used to have this weird problem where you'd get, you'd win like four in a row and you'd almost be to the top and then you'd lose once. And it'd go, and you'd yeah. see the whole thing. It was like the worst feeling yeah. <laughs> the game could offer. Is yeah, just I started just it. ignoring it because I'm like, I don't get it. But. Right, and now they fix that, but also the, the net is that like, <clears throat> rank changes very little and matters very little. Yeah, I've but been, does it matter in the background? It doesn't. It matters for... Uh, it, um, like matchmaking. Well, like I want to know if it matters or... It, it doesn't... What matters is the matchmaking, the MMR, the matchmaking rating under the hood is not the same as your rank. Oh, I see. Right? Those are different things. Like, um, those are different things. They, they're very correlated, but they're not exactly the same thing. And uh, so the, the matchmaking, like how exactly you're being paired is a little bit more under the hood than that. Um, but uh, I think it's pretty above board that all these games are trying to push people towards 50-50 matchups. Okay. Um, that's just, that's important. It is because as the as the game becomes more populated and the systems to do this matchmaking become more iterated upon and sophisticated by wizards, you the better players are going to find themselves playing against better players more and more. Um, hmm. I don't know how I feel about that. Well, we'll see over time. I, I think I'll, I also think, I, I remember when I sucked, I liked playing against better players because when I did on Magic Online, you could actually look at their rating. Remember when those were publicly available? Oh, Which yeah. seems so insane now. But I, you would just, the first thing you do when you play against somebody is just look at their rating. Yep. Right? And then... 
and then it would, it would change be like, how oh, you were treated. Crap. It would change how you were treated. Totally. And, and I also, I remember being nervous. Like, I'd be like, oh man, this guy's really good. Like, yeah. I'm going to lose, you know? Yeah. But if I could beat somebody like that, I'd be like, oh, sweet. You know, I beat a, an 1850 or something like that, you know, when I was 1700 or whatever. Well, I think you'll still experience that in limited Plus, because you got to beat up on the. Yeah, so there, guy, there will the be some kids. of that. Like I told Brian Wong this when we were uh, chatting the other day. And he's like, I don't like that at all. Well, of course you don't like that, Brian. Yeah. It's where it works against your economic interests, uh, but, uh -huh. but it works for the magic interest, right? Like, because losing stinks. And if newer players just lose, 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 they're going to leave. And you mm -hmm. don't want them to leave. Let them play against the other players they're about 50 50 with. So they, they fall in love with this game like we did and stay with us. And if that cost is that I'm going to have, uh, matches that I actually have to think about to win. Okay. You know, like, mm -hmm. or I'm going to lose more. Yes. Like we're, I like, I like to, to run up my win percentage as, as much as anybody. Um, but I also as a designer understand how important, um, giving everybody a taste of victory is. Okay. And, uh, I think so that does for this the limited... affect our bottom line at all. Like, do no, I don't need to do anything right not I just now? Play... We just have to understand that our win percentages as, uh, uh, high winning players right now is likely to trend downward as the okay. as the app uh, gets better, better. Should we get into strategy? Sure. Because this is a big thing. Yep. Um, so first things first, at least from my perspective, and I think for the listeners too, the headliner is I'm not drafting against people. Yes. <clears throat> I am drafting against some type of bot AI magic machine with a curtain in front of it, and I don't know what's going on. All I know is from my perspective, it's like a black box. But like most black boxes, you can figure out what's going on in it by giving it inputs and seeing what comes out. And mm -hmm. when I first started drafting on Arena, what came out was draft a mirror. It yep. was way too open. I drafted it every draft. <laughs> I faced it every draft. You started just completely changing the way you built your deck because three out of four times you were facing the demirror, as they called it. Mm -hmm. um, and then I saw in the release notes for one of the things on Arena, they said, oh, we tweaked the draft bots. Yep. And boom. Now you can still draft it. You know, Demir is still around, but it's a totally different environment right. now. Demir is still strong, but it's merely yeah. strong like so it's strong in the So I'm supposed to be gaming this, right? <clears throat> yes. Like, is, if they're going to give me AI, I should be looking for these patterns and trying to take advantage. Absolutely. Uh, and let's, uh, let, let, I'll give a little story time here. Uh, so how this came about. Uh, features and um, and systems in a video game generally start from a standpoint of user stories and goals. Um, who are the players? Let's make up a story about Frank, who is a casual player who's dabbling in magic for the first time. What is his experience? You, know, you actually tell that story to try and understand what Frank is going to go You're through. You're reverse engineering. Yeah. It. yeah. And then that helps you say, oh, well, Frank is going to be super intimidated by drafting. Uh, cause you get this pick clock on you and then you have, you have, uh, and, and you don't know the cards. You got a minute to look at, fi ah, right? So what is the goal of our, so I'm designing limited systems or, you know, drafting systems. What is, what are some goals? One major goal is we must have a way for new players to draft without the pressure of a pick clock. Doesn't matter how that's solved exactly, but that's a that's a, there's a that, lot of ways you that's can a do requirement. That. Mm -hmm. We need to have Frank be able to stare at that screen for ten hours if he wants to, to before he decides on what pick to, to make. Um, so uh, that need was ever present. We knew that from the get go, and then we also had a dev need that we were discovering as we were testing drafting uh, much earlier on. This is like we had we kind of like way early. This was like Kaladesh actually. We were drafting Kaladesh on it. Um, they, uh, uh, you needed to find seven other coworkers to test it, to get, to, to get seven, to get eight mm. people in the queue to fire it. And that was really, um, uh, inconvenient. And so we set up, um, bots to, after 30 seconds of no, of failure to fill, it would just, uh, fill the seats with bots and those bots would pick randomly or they'd pick, you know, yeah, arbitrarily. There's no strategy to it at all. But it, it worked to give us the ability to test draft because one person could fire a draft. Um, but it was also, also I, I was like, look, we, we needed to do this for dev, but it's also, a, we're on the road to the solution for this goal of, of helping Frank. Yeah, you start putting some rules on those yeah. bots and all of a sudden... That's it what I said. I said, like, let's do some simple rules. Let's come up with some basic algorithm, algorithmic rules using uh, some data we have 
to, uh, to, to decide what bots will pick and how they decide to get into colors and stuff. And I'm not going to get into super what's under the hood, but yeah, there's algorithmic, it, it, they're assessing quality level and then trying to find what lane they're in and stay in that lane. Mm-hmm. That's basically what's going on. Um, we never intended, we've always, and I think I even said it on the show here when I talked about Arena before, and another way you couch stuff in, in game, game dev is talk about your goals. Because if you talk about what your goals are, and then you fail to meet them, you didn't lie to anybody, right? So I hope that when I was on the show, I talked about how our goal is to have uh, uh, eight uh, fully authentic eight human pod drafting. Mm-hmm. That, and I'm sure that still is the goal. Uh, but priorities, right? You only have a finite amount of time and you got to prioritize your features. And so since um, right out of the gate, uh, like with very, almost no polish whatsoever, just our first pass on the AI system, it was reasonable. It was fun. Mm -hmm. Like uh, You were drafting. I was drafting. And another key to about this uh, logic is that you don't need to have seven good decks that the bots could play. You need the human to feel like they were in a real draft. Mm -hmm. That's all. And... um, so the thing is also you don't, because you eventually want to have human drafts, you don't want to invest a ton of resources into the most sophisticated, amazing bot system you've ever seen. Uh, I would love to spend 20 years designing that, but nobody's going to pay me to do that. You right. know? Uh, so you have to say, okay, this is working. This is doing what we want. Because you know, that, that, that experience with Demir that you're talking about, the, like the Demir problem. Mm-hmm. Um, first, if I was still at Wizards, I'm going to tell you right now, that would not have been a problem. I would have seen that. Because I was working on that. And yeah. again, I wasn't there. So they, they, right. they were down designers and, and maybe some uh, stuff slipped on, on uh, bot tuning. Uh, mm-hmm. for, also, for... there's beta testing with your audience. Right. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Which is what it is. It's in yep. beta. So this is something that you'll find. So I would expect eventually we'll see human pods you can participate in. But we'll always have these bot drafts as well uh, for, these, for the gold-based quick drafts. So we should, know, we should understand to the best of our ability what's going on and, and how to adapt as things change. And you mentioned uh, dev notes, and, and that's a major one. Um, or just follow the community. The community will let you know. But basically, whenever there's a new update, uh, we should all be looking out to see if there are changes, if they note changes to um, bot logic or, or draft bots. Uh, and then we can we can see that change. One thing about the, you know, like, it's rigid enough, though, that, so the, the Demir problem happened, and then, uh, because bots don't have a meta, right? Like, they're just going to be the same on day one as they are on day 100. And until they do, it's going to be very exploitable. And I bet they never will, like, we'll see, they'll probably make it less exploitable at some point. Um, but there will always be need to keeping an eye on how bots are uh, approaching their picking but the, the result right now, so what is the takeaway today? Uh, the takeaway today is signals have never mattered more. That's my big takeaway for you in arena drafting. Uh, we talk about how signals are overrated in general, and especially signals sending to the left downstream are overrated, and that's true in paper and true against humans. I don't think they're overrated here. Um, it's really important. I, I, so you're, you're saying the bots are fairly rigid? Yes, because the bots are looking to get in the lane. They're trying to find their lane. And so if you can show some bots, or at least are understanding what lanes down the way... Or here's another example. Uh, let's say you open a... Uh, um, what's, the, what's the best uncommon in uh, Guilds of Ravnica? Mystic. Mystic. Okay. And uh, you open... Uh, a bomb rare, uh-huh. but you're taking the rare. Yeah, you know that the bot to your left is taking that mystic. It's the it's the best card because you know, it is going to base this off of re- real some, real some type of numbers yeah. that somebody has put in. Right, whether it's so so um, it's very good info to know for, with almost 100 percent certainty that the quote player to your left has taken a blue card, and if they get more blue cards, they're going to decide they're blue and stick to that. I see, because when I do this in real life, I make assumptions. Mm -hmm. But human beings do not always line up with the logical assumptions. Right, I cannot be sure that that blue card... I mean, somebody passed me last night Expansion Explosion, pack one, they took some other card out of it and passed me that and were just solidly an is it to my right. Right? Like, I don't think a bot does that. No. Right? Like, yeah, you know, a, a machine doesn't do that. Yeah, the machine is going to value that highest and, and take it out of that pack. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so we need to understand that, um, like, so f- what that changes for me is that, you know, normally when I'm like, 
like you're you're super excited to get signals from the left and or from the right and don't care much about the left. I'm very uh, aware of what okay. uh, of what signals I'm sending. It doesn't it doesn't necessarily change much, but it can do things like you know. It, well, it we, does. I mean, it's still that whole pack. It, yes, it, it can, but it can change what you. It can change your tiebreakers in the future if you understand what you've sent now. Like mm-hmm. I had a draft. Uh, I, I've been kind of data streaming uh, this past week, and I had a draft where. You know, I still love Demir, and there was this pack that had a good black rare, um, one great, you know, not great, but one good Demir multicolored card, and a bunch of good blue, like just a bunch of. Good I remember blue. that pack. You said and, you wanted it for sealed. Yeah, I just yeah. would take that for sealed in a second. That was the one of the most crazy it was packs absurd. I've seen. Yeah, but it was so heavily absurd in blue. That I took, uh, I took the good black card. I remember, and none and, of the blue cards came back. And, right? and yeah, like none of the blue cards came back, and that was important to know that like there was like five playable blue cards. Yeah, and so when you have when you when your first pack has a huge vein of playable to good to great cards in one color. I kind of want to avoid that color because I know where in that, real life that it's going to trickle down and every single bot down the row is going to have one card of that color, which means if any of them start getting into that color elsewhere, they're going to lock into it. And yep. it just seems like that, that like, so heavy density of a single color in your opening pack is a, is a good thing to be aware of. Okay. Uh, and like in uh, real magic, uh, the signals from the right are super important too, because uh, that, you know, the bots are passing to you and when they lock into colors, they're going to ignore that um, pacifism or whatever if they're not in white. And then if that, so you can get really good signals about what's going on kind of fourth, fifth, sixth pick. Uh, But I have never cared more about uh, what I was sending to my players to the left because the players to my left have never been this reliable before. Okay. Uh, So that's, that's the first thing. Um, And then uh, that, that's what changes about draft, right? right. Uh, that makes a little less authentic. Let's mention quickly sealed is an option. Uh, sealed is the most authentic limited format online because it, there is no draft. It's just here's your six boosters. And, and so if you're looking for practicing for GP and you want super authenticity, uh, Arena can provide that on the sealed front for sure. Basically equivalent to what you get on Magic Online, yeah. just with a different UI. Yep. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> but then... That's that's the that's the deal with bot drafts. I know that people have had a lot of questions about that. Yeah. Okay. So we'll keep our eye on those, and we'll probably be mentioning it in uh, on the show here as well, just for arena players, kind of if if things change or or where we're at on those things now. Mm-hmm. Um, what about actual gameplay itself? Yeah. Uh, you know. So now I'm I'm in the game and I'm playing. Where are edges that I can be gained because I'm on arena? You know, we talk about strategic stuff all the time on the show to try to get our listeners up to speed and the best they can be. But where's the edges, you know, on arena specifically? Right. There are there are way you know there are things to know that can absolutely give you edges during gameplay. Um, since we're starting about gameplay, I want to mention up front that um, in best of ones, uh, there is a, a different hand selection algorithm. You don't just get a random seven. Uh, I wrote a post on it uh, on the uh, the forums. Uh, this comes back to similar things, similar reasoning for um, not scaring away new players with uh, with uh, intense choices in a draft pick. Um, ma- magic is also frustrating for uh, when you when you mulligan, and so there's an algorithm in place uh, to. Uh, it basically says instead of drawing seven random cards, we'll take your deck and draw a random seven from it twice from from the full sixty. So you know, so two unique. Um, starting hands, and then it will lean towards taking the one that has the closer to average spell to land ratio in the opener. And this has the, uh, the effect of shaving off the amount of times you're going to see a zero lander, a one lander, a six lander, or a, a seven lander. It kind of pushes everything towards the middle a bit. There's maybe been a little inf- disinformation about there. There's been some well, I saw some articles or yeah. so, so a write up um, about you know maybe changing the number of lands that you have in your deck to react to this because if it's algorithmic, you can reverse engineer it and say, well, if it's not going to let me not have a basically a zero one six or seven lander, well then I can always get two lands and I can afford to actually just play far fewer lands or even more lands in my deck. Yeah, I've seen some but articles. I, I just I looked at that and I'm like, is that even true? No, because um, 
I think it would be true if they had, uh, if, if my post had been written in the way that they were writing those articles. Uh, it feels like the articles that talk about uh, change your mana base to fit the best of one system are ignoring the fact that my post said leans towards. There's this assumption that it looks at the two hands, says this one is closer to average, snap pick it. And that's not what, that's not what is happening. And so until you... So it, it's more complicated. It is that. more complicated than that. And, le, and unless it's, it's Lauer complicated. I work with Eric Lauer on this too. And, and Math genius. Yeah, Eric math Lauer. genius. And also that should comfort you that I worked on this with Eric Lauer because he is one of the most amazing caretakers of this game that you could ever meet. And uh, he wants the He's best great. for all players and as many players as possible. And he thinks about how players feel about things and... Uh, he also cares deeply about authenticity. And the line we were looking for in coming up with the algorithm is basically we want to reduce the poor the number of poor experiences from mulligans, especially in best of one where you don't have that mitigation of, well, I got mana screwed out of game one, but I'll get him in the next two. You know, that's part of it is like, is that you, you just really want those players to feel um, less <laughs> that sting less, less of that but bad you don't like. want it to adjust to, to significantly alter any kind of uh, mana base construction. We don't want people to need to know that this is even happening to properly play this game. So, um, if those articles are right, then Arena is doing it wrong, and that we but we weren't doing it that way. And when I left, that was all. This is all still in beta, all still testing. Should we do it this way? Uh, I was having conversations we, before we left about different ways, completely different ways we could approach that. Throwing the formula out altogether, not doing it. We, we, we kind of took not doing it at all off the table, though, because we thought it was working. Like, mm -hmm. it, just, it just feels, you know, in the, in the way we were playing. Now, you play mostly best two of three draft, which is just going to be clean, straightforward. Well, um, I'm only getting plenty. Yeah, you, you see it all. <laughs> but if anybody, if you play a ton of best of one, it feels really nice. You just don't mulligan a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's happening to everybody, and you don't need to mess with your mana. I don't. I should, like... If you I, don't, then I'm I, not. I, I've I mean, seen you, the formula. You know the formula. <laughs> Let's see. It, like, more, than, more to the point, Eric Lauer won't. And if Eric Lauer, the designer of the formula, is uh, uninterested in optimizing his mana base towards it, then um, I don't think you should be either. Okay. Uh, so that's so that, that that was the, that. So there we are in our starting. Now we're, let's get into the the meat of gameplay. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that this game is trying to do is make the pace of magic um, faster. Um, and uh, <clears throat> so uh, we want to um, note that it is auto passing a lot. Right? You've got like uh, that if you don't have anything to do. It'll auto pass for you on a magic line. It'll do that if you tell it to, and only if you're like fully tapped out. This is the F8. Yeah. Thing. On, on 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 arena though, like let's say it's turn one, and I play an island untapped, and I have nothing in my hand. It, it just, will zoop. It just says it, go. It'll go. It'll go right over to your turn. And it'll do your turn. It won't let me do anything. And it'll zoop back over to me. Now if I have opt, it'll do normal instant stop, stop, type pauses. Stop, stop. Not necessarily for everything. Because they're, 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 they did smooth those over. They smoothed too. those over. They're not Much smooth. to my frustration, by the way, in some situations. I'm yeah. still learning when to do the full control. Mm -hmm. Mainly with going into combat, they skip beginning of combat. It just goes right to attackers. Yes. They, uh, unless, it's, uh, unless you've got uh, vehicles, I think, then they allow Is that you. what it is? Yeah. Like, so there's, there's all these tricks to, to, to try to make you not notice, basically just to... to be, we got your back. Don't worry about it. But then, of course, when it's not, you got you got to be very careful. But the main thing there is that it um, it, pr it produces this information leak that uh, is troubling for a lot of super competitive players because it 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 it's a ding on the authenticity. I agree. Um, but in the at the end of the day, it's an advantage to the better players anyway, and it's advan it's an advantage to the players who understand how to read this new. Uh, sign that's happening on Arena, which is where is it pausing and where is it not? Right. And with what mana they have? With available. what mana they have available? Because I remember you you were talking about this a lot on a really complicated game you had mm -hmm. revolving around dazzling lights. The yes. Blue one one blue mana. That's instant. the poster child on uh, on, the on, on GRN. Thing. There's yeah. only one other card I think. I don't know if there's any. I guess um, there's uh, invert invent. There's invert from invert invent, and there's the the black uh, removal. I had a specifically there's status statue. I had a blue black gate. You know. But if you just have an island, really it's only invert uh, that is the other possible card besides Dazzle. So when your opponent only has one island up and you're seeing it 
pause, stop, pause, 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 pause. You can pretty much put them on dazzling. dazzling with a tiny chance of invert. And that's a major tell, right? That's a, that's like showing a card in your hand. And that really is off-putting to a lot of uh, serious players. And to those players, I'd say, I get it. It's a, it's a, it's a thing we debated a lot about in, in the office. But it's a trade-off, and it's a trade-off you can take advantage of. So let's just learn to do that. And also, so learn to see when it's happening. Um, remember that uh, counter spells are tricky, because if you see, oh, it's zipping through his turn, I'm, I'm, uh, I can just uh, uh, cast this spell, and then they counter it. Well, you can't, it's an instant, but you can't just cast a counter spell at any time, so it's skipping all of those times because it's not a legal time to cast the counter spell, right? So keep that in mind. But uh, it's definitely a tell on combat tricks. Um, I have absolutely altered my lines of play based on realizing, oh, they attacked with only one white mana available and there were pauses. The only cards in this format that are one, might, one white instance are Righteous uh, Blow. Righteous blow. Yeah, card. so there, there's a combat trick. That this. There's also oh. the plus one, plus one split card, but yeah. Or yep. plus two, plus two split card. Yeah, right. So, But it's still like combat there's, trick. There's three combat tricks. Yeah, yeah, there's some combat trick to be worried about versus like, zoop, okay, I got the, they got nothing and it's going to um, be easy. Now... Uh, so hopefully you can start to take advantage of that and, and take note of... Uh, also, this makes uh, something... It adds a little bit of value in the formats to cards with activated abilities that are cheap, like tap abilities or something, or uh, are... sacrifice abilities. Mm -hmm. As soon as something is on board that provides an instant speed, you're, now you're completely masked. Now you're not leaking any information because it's right there on board. It could be that it's pausing for that, so I don't know what's going on in their hand. I had that yesterday with the... Uh, the enchantment that allows you to sacrifice and, and shuffle your library back into your graveyard. Yeah, Once but, that was on board, yeah. I stopped worrying about memory. Yeah. Uh, I wonder if they'll stop printing cards like that. <laughs> Just, you know, constantly activatable ability, slow down all of Arena. I don't think... Well, so there's tools that... Uh, I believe that the Arena team will develop the tools to allow for those cards smartly. Uh, they, we, we, we had some prototype stuff. And they're, 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 again, places always have more ideas than they have time to do. So they, I, I think that stuff will improve. Um, so um, that's... Uh, let's see. So then... That's the leak side of it. If you want to, uh, so you can throw tells though. So the mm -hmm. control key puts you into full control. So full control says, I don't like this nonsense of uh, you auto passing. I want to take all my decisions. Um, you can put on full control for one, for the next decision, for the next time you have priority by hitting control. It'll put up this button that says full control. And then the next time priority could be handed to you, no matter what the situation, it'll stop for it, right? So if you want to pretend you have dazzling, you need to uh, be on top of the control, and you can send this. You, you can hit control to go into to have it pause, just as though you had an instant or something to do. And I've done that a lot too. Um, I try to throw false signals. Uh, the flip side is to try and disguise the fact that you have the dazzling. And this is the harder part. By passing really quickly. You need to either pass really quickly, but it's basically if someone's truly looking for this, it's difficult yeah. to pass quickly enough to yeah, uh, to disguise too. it. There is the end turn button. Uh, which is a little buggy right now. It doesn't and work right. It doesn't work right. And I told uh, I, that one of my final messages to uh, one of my friends on the dev team was like, you got to set up end turn to be a legitimate, uh, or pass turn to be a legitimate bluff that I don't have any. Yeah. And because what's, what's, what, and I'm sure we'll see it. He agreed. And so, I, like, again, when it gets to the priority level, we'll see this change, I bet. Uh, it will be their goal. You know, <laughs> let's talk in terms of goals. I'm sure the goal is to address this. But it's like uh, the, uh, what I want is that when I cast a spell and I have something else but don't want to show it, while that spell animation is happening, I want to be able to hit end turn yes. and have it, uh, and then it just and have it work. Away. Yeah. But it doesn't. It, it no, you it'll click stop it, you. it still stops, right? Yeah. And so it's interesting because <laughs> that button's probably better off for being a little more forgiving because it's effectively F six like on Magic Online, which is a very brutal thing to accidentally, you know, to not be able to back off on. Yes, and you'll get feel bads from that. But also, like it's my game, and if 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 I say I never hit the end turn button because it's too scary. Just like some people never used F6. Mm -hmm. I totally understand. Right. But it should do what it says on it. Yes. Okay, so the the thing that but I wonder from this though is when you when and how are you actually implementing these bluffs or lack of bluffs or tells or false tells or whatever? 
Well, I'm constantly trying to be aware of whether my opponent is uh, stopping for anything. Uh, be very aware of when activated abilities hit the board, because then you can stop. <laughs> then I tur completely turn it off. Uh, but it's more important to be trying to read what your opponent is up to than disguising yourself. So if you want to not worry about um, uh, using full control and pass turn to try and bluff, you don't have to. Uh, but I try to do it when um, when my mana when it's a very narrow selection of possibilities. If I've got five mana up and six cards in hand, and there's an instant like I'm not, you don't need to try. You don't bother trying to hide that. Like if your opponent's already trying to think about that stuff in that spot. It's when you have one white mana or one blue mana, and you do have the dazzling, and you do have that combat trick, and that is and ask yourself how important. You know, I've got a very small number of mana, a very narrow number of cards that can be cast with it. I have one of those cards, and it's a huge piece of info for my opponent to have if they know that. The, when those pieces come together, and that's why Dazzling is my yeah. poster child for it, uh, that's when I make some kind of effort uh, to disguise. Okay. And when it comes to using full control, mm -hmm. I mean, I admit it. Even like I've, I've been playing this infinite and I'm still like a little unclear about like I basically never use full control, which is probably a good thing, right? Yes. Like it's a good thing, you know, speaking to the design of it. But also there are a few times where I feel like I should right. and I don't, I, I do use stops. You know, you can hit the little icon on that sort of arc yep. by the player's head to say, I want to stop, stop on the upkeep upkeep draw you know i want to get a stop before we go here's to an example on, on, str on stream the other day i had uh, green seeker the uh dry the green seeker. dry green seeker and it taps to reveal a card and if it's a land you get to draw it right mm -hmm. and there's weird times where you might want to do that and like i'm going to activate it at the end of their turn but if it is a land then i want to activate it again on the beginning of my yep. upkeep yep so therefore now on my turn I'm going to set a stop for my future upkeep mm -hmm. so that uh, I come back around to that. Those are useful. Full full control uh, as One a... One thing about those sure. stops, they yeah. go away. They do go away. They, they're once, so you yeah. got to set them every time. Uh, that's a little annoying on some of those things, but it's not too bad. It's, it, it's, uh, it's, it's better than letting people have something that just locks it down. The thing yeah. I want to do is, is often stop on combat. Yes. Because it leaves... Well... And so you're getting to the point of my advice on the point, which is, uh -huh. are you about to do something unusual or are you, do you need to respond to yourself? And so something unusual might be, oh, I, I've already reached declare attackers, but now I've changed my mind and I actually want to like do something. I, I don't know. Whenever I, some, is something just like, I'm not sure. When you're, when you're suddenly like, whoa, well, I'm I not have sure. A, I have a great example okay. and it's, it's, I want to copy a spell. That, well, that's a different. That's part two. We'll yeah. get to that. I'm uh -huh. So, because that's a very, that's that's responding to yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, but before responding, to well, yourself, you like, said something weird. Okay, yes. Yeah, so, yeah. But when you want to respond to your own spells, that's that's how you copy stuff. Is mm -hmm. what I was getting at. But yeah, so weird. Weird more means like um, I'm not sure. Like if you're just if you have that feeling that. Uh, I'm doing a move I don't usually do in this yeah, game, and I'm sure. not sure if it's going to stop right. You go ahead, go ahead and do it. You know, and you do, can do what? It. Oh, hit control, mm -hmm. and you can. And, and that point, hold it'll, it or just push it. Push pushing it once if you're not sure. You can do it one at a time. Like basically, you can say, "Give me the next opportunity," and it will. And then once you have it, you can hit it again to give you the next one if you want. So you I can see. advance it one at a time like that, or you can do uh, lock it. So if you do hold down control and then hit shift. Um, I think that's right. Uh, yes, you. Uh, it goes into locked mode, and it's miserable. Like, just don't... The only time you need to do it is when you're pulling off a complex copy spell type maneuver, and you just want it all step by step, uh, because you will actually fail. Like, you will not successfully... Uh, let's, the, the, uh, let's go to Dominaria, the mythic two blue-blue... Um, uh, wizard Lord. Yeah, n uh, Narumeha. When she enters the battlefield, you can copy a spell. Uh, but if you want to copy your own spell, that's you know you can you can respond to somebody else's spell and copy it easy. But if you want to go, I'm going to cast my my bolt and then um, respond to it by casting the spell and then copy that. That's when go ahead before you do anything, just to be sure, just go into full control and. Um, 
The trouble, the, the thing to really be aware about of full control when you're pulling off one of these maneuvers is that, uh, we'll get to the clock next, is that you, uh, you do have to do a lot more clicking. You have to select all of your, you tap all of your lands to produce the mana. You individually, uh, select the mana from your pool to pay for the things. Like, it is a laborious process to, uh, to, to do a chunk like that. So you really want, uh, the way the clock works is you don't have infinite time or you don't have a bank of time. You have a turn timer, more like Hearthstone. So um, you can bog down a turn with that kind of maneuvering. So right. uh, be careful. Okay. Uh, but also don't panic. We'll get to the clock later. Don't panic yeah. about the clock, but, yeah. uh, but be aware of it. And, um, by the way, with the League Guild Mage, mm -hmm. it does it automatically. Oh, yeah? You put, a, you put a spell on the stack and it's like resolve. It has a button. And if mm -hmm. for your own spell... And that's which I think is a really clever little touch that isn't something you would do all right. the time. But like somebody was like, "This is just better." Right. That is that is game design right there, and that is then that is set design, and that's what I try to tell people. Like that, that it's funny because magic is a designed game. My uh, poster child for this for me is like a cone of flame. Cone of flame is an easy magic card to code. It's a thing that deals three, two, and one to three different targets. Done, mm -hmm. easy. Now successfully communicate to a magic player. In all possible scenarios, uh, all the information needed so that they can properly respond to that. Which spell. one's first? Right. Which one's that, targeted? And that's something? where you yeah. get a designer in to look at card by card and say, what is the experience? Let's go back to Frank again and see what it's going to be like for him to uh, resolve this card. And uh, the designer is there to uh, hand roll cases like that. And they're saying, hey, this is a, this is a powerful card. Let's, and, 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 People don't know full control, right? Like you as a designer need to save people from that. And so you got to identify that card and be like, everybody's going to mess this up. They're going to cast their spells, think they can respond to it, not, and have a really, and probably lose a game over it, you mm -hmm. know? And you really got to protect players from that when you can as a designer with individual uh, handling of cards like yeah, that. Yeah, so that is I not appreciate some, it. Yeah, so that's probably specific to that card. But the nice thing about Magic is, and, and the rules engine that the game has is that these chunks of rules, these chunks of card rules, uh, appear, you know, are consistent. So the work that was done on that guild mage to allow that to happen will probably, who knows, maybe that, um, that, uh, uh wizard now no, huh? does, you know, like it, sometimes you fix something like that or you add a feature to a mechanic and then it just propagates to the future and makes all of it better in the future. Yeah, that's so, a good tell. Yeah. If your opponent has an army, how all their spells just stay on the stack until they okay them. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. So that's how you get out of that is by using full control mode in doses yeah. to either represent something to your opponent by a random bluff or whatever. Uh, when the time is appropriate and mm -hmm. not obsess over it. But, you know, if you know your opponent, I, you know, the way, the way I would do it is if I had blue mana up and my opponent played around it in the first game, I would consider doing full control when I didn't have it. That's a good call. You know, that kind of thing. Because most people aren't paying attention, which right. is why I'm saying you be the one paying attention and you, you don't yet have to worry too much about paying, people paying attention to you because people don't seem to really be doing that, but it's, it's hard to say. Okay, so that's how we fix that. Now, what about um, the, the, clock? the clock? You mentioned the clock. I did mention the clock that it can be that, that uh, it's a different system. If you're used to magic online, uh, you just or get a bank life. or real life. Yeah, well, round yeah. times. You know, yeah. uh, they're different. There's different there's pressures in both. Minutes, yeah. There's different <laughs> pressures in both, and they're yeah. both saying, "Hey, this game will end at some point in this future." In fact, we can probably tell you a minimum or a maximum. Like it will go at most this. Uh, the way it's happening on Arena is that. Um, you have a, a reasonable amount of time per turn, and if there's a there's a couple of cues that you're pushing up against your the allotted time for your turn. The first is this uh, brilliant thing that happened after I left. I don't know uh, who all uh, made this happen. Maybe it's this, this the sound person, but it's brilliant. The uh, uh, the sound of like a huge football footfall in the distance lands, Thong. and that's like. This huge thing is starting, to, and you hear another one, and like that's the like. So this <laughs> huge Jurassic beast is Park coming towards you. It's, that's that's this sign. It's time to go. Uh -huh. it's time, we got to move, mm -hmm. and so that's your cue to like, hey, you know. Um, and then what happens is you hear the sounds, the, the old fuse. This is you uh, see it too. You right? see it, yeah. Uh, it, it depends. Uh, it, it's represented in different ways. For you, it's big and glaring across the screen. For your opponent's fuse, it's on their icon. It's this little arc, yeah, a little arc, little half arc. But mainly, you know, keep your audio on and listen for this stuff, and and uh, and and you'll get those cues. Um, 
if you finish your turn before, I don't know if it happens before footfall. It's probably just fuse. If you if it, if you get to the if you finish your turn before the fuse hits, you get a little hourglass. You get an you get a, a, a an hourglass counter. Um, and then for every three hourglass counters, for every three prompt turns you play, you get a time bank uh, token. I don't know what they call it, but basically, you know, mm-hmm. a, a, a time bank, thirty second time bank. And if you if your fuse ever runs down, um, it'll tell you. Uh, time extension used 30 seconds and then you get 30 more seconds on your turn and uh, then after that the AI will take over and just say look we're going to make legal moves and finish this turn and the AI will take over and if you're out of out of time bank and the fuse runs out and then you get to play again so it's not even like on magic online oh, really? yeah it's I not like you just lost it's not something. like and you're done it's just like the AI says look this turn's got to end and it moves to the next turn and then gives you a chance to rebuild and you get another well, how re- is it casting creatures for you no it's probably just doing it's probably getting to the end of the turn as fast as okay. it doesn't happen to me much so i'm not sure okay. um the, you know it but if if you're like tanking on a blocking decision it's probably just going to do the bare minimum it'll say if it, whatever blocks you had done will stay yeah it's not going to it's yeah. not going to try and strategically yeah. play it's going okay. to try and end the turn quickly i was going to say because it might be good might be better than me <laughs> <Yeah>. no. <laughs> no no it's not it's it's just going to try and, and basically say end turn okay uh and so that's a punishment but it's but not that also means that there's no limit if i play within the Right. Realm if of the regular turn plus my time banks, I could just play forever. Yeah, if you're playing turn by turn and playing promptly, uh, it won't run out on you, which is interesting. My like we Magic have, Online. Don't worry, we have Mythic Rare stay in the game. Yeah. <laughs> we, well, on Magic Online, like I, I'm a slow enough player that um, I, clock management was a thing that I had to deal with on Magic Online, and I was constantly aware of whether I was ahead or behind. And this game goes long. Am I just the one gonna, at the short Should end of I the scoot? stick? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Like, and I just don't have to do that anymore because I just have to take prompt turns, and I can do that in general. And it's I, I kind of like how it forces my hand in the ways that I am a slow magic player because it's like the the footfall comes like dude doom, make a choice doom. <laughs> you got to figure this out and then I move on right mm-hmm. and so it's actually making my game gameplay faster um, and uh, I've I've, rep- I've appreciated that part about it and it allows me to not stress about the clock costing me the match itself. You okay. Know? Uh, uh, is there anything strategic that we, I mean, there's no edge to be had, right? You just play a reasonable really, pace. There's only um, edges that I can't recommend because they make everybody miserable. Yeah. Like there's like, you know, and like Hearthstone, I think it's pretty typical for competitive players to do nothing for the first, to, to like let the timer go to, to, to let things go to timer. Cause there's no consequence, at least with arena, there's a benefit to finishing ahead of the timer. So there, there's this little reward where we're, I like that it leads this reward for players to play promptly because it's, it gives you time banks for later. Um, but it can be abused. You can sit there. If you know how long it takes before fuse comes, you can sit there and annoy your opponent by not acting until you absolutely have to, but that's but like, that's stupid. miserable for you too. Like it's just that's, it's just that, then you're just in, in a retribution time yeah, or something. It's, it's like do something better with your life. Yeah. Though. Okay. Um, Good. I think that covers the uh, the arena specific stuff that we wanted to touch on here, at least strategically, and the you know the directly applicable stuff for our audience. Um, but you mentioned at the at the front of the show that you are kind of embarking on a, a new venture here. Um, you know, you you found yourself with a bunch of free time here, and all of a sudden uh, the 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 wheel started spinning. Yeah, I was trying to figure out what to do next. It, you know, the, the I had the home projects and everything to to occupy my summer. Had a great summer with the kids, and uh, I'm, I'm closing on empty nest. And that's what kind of got me thinking. You know, I got uh, I, I do want to get back to uh, game design and uh, uh, probably office life again at some point. But I have this little window here where I'm not in it, and I'm like, I, I miss magic content. I just do. And I'm playing Arena every single day and finding myself chatting with Adam or sending him draft picks and what would you do here and talking things through with him, just like it kind of reminds me of where what yep. caused us to start limited resources. Yep. We, us talking at poker, and it's like, why are we just doing this at the poker table? Why don't we just broadcast it and see if anybody cares? Right. And that's exactly the same philosophy here. Um, I want to get some magic plates spinning before I head back into corporate life. And if I can, uh, this is a perfect time for me to try streaming. I love doing magic content. That is sweet. I have a lot to say about this, this specific, uh, expression of magic. I have my time in R and D I have a lot to talk about there. Um, and 
you know, I'm not a pro. Let's be clear that, that uh, you know, why should you watch me, right? Uh, I am uh, not at, you know, I've, I got to play Paolo uh, on Magic Online through a coverage thing, uh, on uh, employee thing. And he, it, it just opened my eyes to where I am as a Magic player, which is very, very good. But still a significant gap between where, where those <laughs> players are at. Uh, and I could feel it when, when playing him as I would say, aha, I'm going to do this. And he will, Oh, he didn't do that. You know, like he's just throwing me off. Yeah. Um, so I'm still learning too and everything, but I am, I've always been good at talking about this game and teaching how players can move upward, upward, upward and, and yep. improve. And I'm good at talking through what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. And, uh, that's the, the, that's what I have that not necessarily other streamers might. I have okay. I have insider cred that I can share with you. We can I'm willing you can it's an ongoing AMA on my stream. You can pop in and, and ask me anything about wizards, about arena, about Marshall, and uh, <laughs> I will answer diplomatically, but I will answer and, and uh, I'm looking forward to that kind of conversation. That's what's exciting to me about magic content these days. You know, before I went into wizards, uh, we were uh, doing draft videos and articles and podcasting, but there wasn't interaction with uh, the people consuming your content. And that's what's exciting. Directly. Think, directly. And that's what's exciting to me about streaming. And I'm also getting to like the secondary market. I got a lot of cards after Wizards, so I'm, I'm trying to find, I'm, I'm selling stuff uh, under this umbrella too. So basically there's a bunch of magic plates that I'm getting spinning under this going optimal uh, heading of the banner, IP, brand, whatever you want to call it. And uh, it's because it's, it represents a philosophy that I think is appropriate for magic and appropriate for life. And it's, it's important to me. And it, it, it's kind of a, it's, it's in a sense the, um, the unifying principle of all of our advice and all of, uh, mm -hmm. you know, is mm -hmm. that, that we're trying to, we're, we're, what are we doing? We're going optimal. And what does that mean? And to me, you know, it stemmed from the idea of going infinite on magic online and how unrealistic that is. Mm -hmm. And how going optimal is realistic and is how we should more be thinking about these things in our lives. And the way I think about going optimal is in uh, my analogy would be coffee. You know, I love coffee. A lot of listeners know I, I, I was infamous uh, at Wizards for having uh, I, I roast my own coffee now and I would bring it in and share it. And, and I made, made a lot of converts. <laughs> I, I, it's like siring vampires, you know, like I've, I, <laughs> I sired a bunch of roasters at Watsi and they're uh -huh. off siring other roasters, I'm sure. Um, but I like coffee because imagine as an example, because let's take uh, the worst cup of coffee we can imagine. An expired decaf Italian roast instant Folgers. Mm. Okay, like just the worst. Technically, that is trying to be a cup of coffee. So you know you would identify it, but but it's like the worst end of it. And then on the other, call that zero. And at a hundred, we have the most premium, perfect for you cup of coffee that you can possibly conceive of. My goal with going optimal is how do we get what what are the chunks? What are the steps we can take towards a hundred? Not that we're getting there. Not that we're optimal. Not that we're maximized, but we're going towards there. And you're trying to get there as efficiently as possible. And so I like, with coffee, it's pretty simple. There is the bean. There is how you roast that bean. There is how soon you consume it, how fresh it is uh, after it's been roasted, and how it's brewed. Mm -hmm. There's four things. That's, that's all going to determine your cup of coffee. And let's say, just for sake of simplicity, they're each 25% of that 100 of the perfect cup of coffee. Well, let's take a look at, uh, say, roasting the bean. Uh, well, uh, don't over, you know, most, a lot of coffee out there, especially the canisters in the store are over roasted. So you're, you're, you're at a zero when you're down there. But if you start roasting or you start finding, not roasting your own, that's extreme. Just take a note of like, like that, hey, over roasted coffee is like it's burnt toast. Mm -hmm. Like let's back off on it. So when I learned that and that, that ah, cause Starbucks and other places have sold the idea that hyper dark coffee is somehow the, the truest when actually to me, that's like, yeah, it's like, it's like a blackened toast. Like, mm -hmm. it, it, uh, so for me, not liking that flavor, learning that about it and starting to trend towards lighter roasts was like a huge 
increase in my coffee habits. So that got you from zero yeah. to 40% yeah. of, of, of the 25% that is roast level, yeah. right? You know, and you can take that for every one. And like, so I like these beans or uh, uh, brewing. And what you want to do is find, you're never going to get to 100. And you don't even want to, because that's actually not optimal. That's maximum, but it's not optimal. And what I, because I'm looking for the huge chunks. So like, stop buying your coffee from the canisters in the grocery store. That stuff is garbage. That's a bad bean choice and a bad roast choice. Like you're at zero on both of those there. If you just start taking these things into account, you can get up and up and up. And, and pretty soon you get like, so I think you add all these things up and you get to like 90 and then you get that, that last 10 is where the craziness begins. And that's where... Where it's not optimal. It's not optimal. Unless you derive so much joy in your life sure. from that. Yeah, that you can that do whatever is. you want. Because that's the ultimate optimization. Is like I, I like to say, uh, you know, in, in Magic R&D, there's a joke that uh, every mechanic is just kicker. You know, mm -hmm. that, like, <laughs> that, that kicker was too broad because it covered everything. Mm -hmm. And uh, so with... Uh, with Mechanics of life, it's all uh, time to happiness conversion mechanics. Yeah, that's, the, that's your baseline. Yeah, time to happiness is the kicker of life. Yeah, you <laughs> and, know, and, and to, to reflect that to Arena, I mean, I could give an example, which is that you're saying, well, you're not, you know, you're not going to go infinite on Arena. And I could say, I probably could. Like, if I put in 18 hours a day on Arena and I ground even the 50 gold, you know, Per mat, you know, and I just found the one way I could play the fastest, even if it, even if I hit my big stuff and I just went, you know, I could probably come back to you in a month and say, I didn't spend anything and I got to play all the events I wanted at some capacity, right? But if I invested the hundred dollars into gems to kick things off, I could probably play two hours or three hours a day of exactly what I want to be doing at all times at the, the entire time. And I could free up 16 hours of my life every day right. to do other things like be an adult and, you know, work and that kind of thing. Yeah. Right. And like, don't confuse optimal with maximal. Right. Optimal does not mean maximum. It means taking the big chunks that are given to you and then identifying the spot where you want to hit to get you to where you want to be. If I happen to be independently wealthy and loved playing arena for 50 gold per thing, then Hey, mm -hmm. you know, go for it. Marsh, whatever, buddy, you know, but for most people, that's not where you're going to land because we can't, you know, dedicate that kind of time to it. Right. So that's my, that's and you're my, kind of applying this philosophy across your whole, all of the things that you're going to be doing. Yeah. And, and it's, uh, it's just, it's my philosophy of life. So it, it, and I didn't even, I didn't know how to name it and mm -hmm. you helped me name it. Yeah. Right. You know, mm -hmm. so the, our conversation helped me, me name my life philosophy in a way that, uh, was a, an available website. So we called my company that. Yeah. <laughs> and, and off and, you go. And off I go. Yeah. And, uh, so I'm just trying to get these magic plates uh, plates of spinning while I'm uh, not in an office, and then my kids are going to leave home and uh, go off and hopefully live fruitful lives, uh, and I'll have more time uh, to keep those plates spinning even when I'm back in an office. So that's mm -hmm. kind of how I'm thinking about it. Um, what can people expect? I mean, you're you're talking about going optimal on Arena here. If I tune in, am I just going to be watching you draft, or are you going to show me actually how to you know, manage these things. So right now I'm playing on my paid account. I have an account that I've uh, paid the hundred gold, a hundred dollars for, for gems in. And my daily there is I'm uh, every morning, uh, every weekday morning, 10 AM uh, drafting for at least a couple hours, if not more. And then weekends and evenings as I can find time uh, that's Twitch TV uh, slash going optimal. And we're largely going to draft, but we're going to take it basically. The, the, I've kind of subtitled it um, "Optimizing Arena for the Limited Leaning Player." Mm -hmm. And limited leaning is crucial because it doesn't mean that it's never going to have constructed, right? Uh, but hey, if but, there's low hanging fruit in yeah. constructed, you know, I'll jam a few matches. And it's fun, on it. yeah. And, well, it, and it's it is, it well, is yeah. come the on. right decks are fun. I'm just the kidding. right decks. I, are fun. I, I, I tease. I like yes. I like constructed. You like constructed too. Yeah. So there's 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 that side of it, and then I'm also uh, I haven't even played this account yet, but I did make a, a, another account uh, for specifically approaching it from a free to play standpoint. So what I uh, we'll see if you know it's all going to iterate. We'll see what the audience develops and what that audience wants. But what I'm going to start with is uh, having this going optimal arena account that I only ever play on stream. And so, uh, and I never, I might spend the five bucks cause I think that is correct, 
So we'll probably spend the five bucks on the, the welcome package and then never spend on that account again. Oh, you're, you're planning on just free playing that. Right. Account. And so we're going to take a look at what the real free to play feels like uh, on Arena by starting each morning uh, by taking care of business on the free to play account, which means going in, um, uh, flipping our quests, grinding our gold and playing in an, uh, a draft on that account if we have earned one. Um, and if, uh, if not, uh, cranking out a couple of, uh, you know, constructed games to, to, yep. to do that. But then, uh, the thing is the resources for doing what we want to do, which is play limited, will run out on that account pretty quickly and regularly. So that's when I'll flip over to, um, my main account, my paid account and, but and if get people, back to but if people want to know how to play for very, very cheap or free, they can watch you. On and watch your patterns as you play on the going optimal account, and they can mimic you and yeah. say, "Okay, this is a reason. This is what I can expect if I decide to put in, you know, after the first five bucks or whatever, zero dollars." Yeah, right. I think that's really that's really helpful. And then I think that a lot of our audience. I mean, I think most of our audience will split into one of these two groups: either that, or they'll say, "No, I have some money to spend on this. Like I'm a magic player. It's not like you know, you can't be destitute and be a magic player. Like it just costs too much to just." you know, play any form of magic, right? So I'm going to spend a hundred bucks every few months, right? Like that's something I can justify right. for the amount of entertainment I'm getting out. And they get a chance to see what you, who's a good player, does with that. Right. Okay. Yep. And that sounds sweet. Yeah, we'll that's give that exciting, a try. Man. Yeah, if everybody, if that proves uh, interesting and popular, I'll stick with it. If not, we'll change the formula. But uh, that's that's what I'm thinking would be interesting is to just uh, take a look and, and see what free play gives, but then jump into uh, what the moneyed world gives as well. Yeah. And obviously, mo that's going to mostly be limited. I doubt I'll play constructed on my. Uh, money to count uh, unless we want to really see something new and standard something you know again i'm going to see what the audience wants but uh, since we're starting here i'm expecting that mostly <laughs> they're going to want limited like me so when uh 10 a.m monday through friday with uh that's pacific seattle time and then uh, uh evenings and weekends when i can get to it uh, that's the, that's the starting plan. Yeah. Twitch.tv slash going optimal. I'll have yep. it in the show notes as well. You can follow, uh, Ryan on there, uh, to get notified when you go live, if people want to want to check it out and I'll, I'll yeah. tweet it and stuff too. I mean, I'm excited for you. Like, this is just cool. Like, yeah, it'll be fun. It uh, also is a perfect companion to LR. I mean, you, you know, you started LR with me, like you laid the foundation for a lot of what we still try to hammer through to our listeners to this very day. And so, you know, if, if you like the stuff that we talk about on LR, a lot of it came from Ryan and he's going to be talking about it live on his stream. And it's pretty cool that, you know, they can ask too. So. Yeah. And let's figure out formats together. I'm going to be excited to, you know, uh, uh, stumble our way through early formats, uh, with, with viewers chatting away. It's yeah. going to be great. Okay. Takeaways. Yeah. Okay. Um, you know, Luis and I are really big on takeaways, right? Mm -hmm. We want the listener to go, okay, the show's ending now. What did I learn? What am I going to do? You know, since this is arena specific, let's talk about that. So if you are a primarily limited player, you are probably going to have to pay to keep drafting, especially if you want to do the competitive drafts repeatedly. But you can get it pretty darn cheap. When you do pay, Get $100 increments of gems. Don't get the smaller ones unless you can't afford it. Yeah, and if, and if you can't afford it, if possible, you should be saving your money over time until you have 100 and then spend it. Because you know, you're like, just getting free value. Yeah, then. it's just it, you, like you're saying you can't afford it, so I'm going to buy $5 packages instead. Well, over time, you're actually just spending way more money. Right. So if you have the discipline to hold off on exactly what you want to play on arena and start out by doing the grind until you've saved up enough for the gem purchase. Do that. Yeah. So do that. Um, again, going optimal on here means buying these gems as infrequently as you can. It doesn't mean never buying them, right? You're just trying to get that down the most. Um, one of the big takeaways here is you're trying to have the most fun in this case, for your dollar or for your time, however, you know, you the, the, as you said, they're basically the same thing for most people. But that's that's your goal, right? Mm -hmm. You're trying to get the most enjoyment you can out of this. I mean, I use the word fun. And it's interesting because I, I don't actually use that. I don't actually like that word to describe things like this. Because a lot of the things that I enjoy the most in life aren't what I would categorize as fun. Right. It's a like, challenge. It, it's, it's interesting. It's engaging. It makes me, I, I thoroughly enjoy it. 
right? Like, for example, I love photography, right? And I might be like, hey, uh, you know, like I can, I, I'll just tell So there was, um, there was a couple of, like maybe a month ago, there was a few weeks where it was super foggy here in Seattle. And mm-hmm. that's just weird. We don't normally get fog yeah, you know, outside weird. of a little bit in the morning. It's like actual and, driving sight distance issues. Yes. <laughs> and it was very strange. And so what I did is I walked down to the market, to the Pike Place Market, because I, lo- I love that area and they have the sign out there. And I thought it might look cool in the fog. But it was like two in the morning, right? And I went down there with my camera equipment and it's a little sketchy down there or whatever. And I did some shoots and it was like, difficult because the fog changed things and the lighting was weird. And I, I had to really struggle on like, well, what do I actually want to capture? Cause the sign looked like it was a different color because of the fog, but there's also, it had rained. So the ground was shiny and I could try to get that in the shot. And, you know, I worked that scene if you will. Mm-hmm. And, and when I was on the way back up here, I was like, I was love. I was like, that was, you know, really great. You know, like that's why I love photography, like something kind of fleeting that you're trying to catch and you work it and all this stuff. But if somebody said, did you have fun? I'd be like, no. Did you leave happy? Yes. There very we go. much That's so. That's why I, I say left, or time fulfilled. to happiness, not time to fun. Yeah. So fulfilled, you know, whatever. Anyway, that was a long explanation. But you are trying to get the most enjoyment you can for your dollar and for your time. So keep that in mind as your bottom line where, yes, it can be tempting to try to over game these things, right? To, to maximize every tiny little stupid look. Go optimal. Don't go infinite. It's okay. Um, daily quests. Yep. Do your dailies. Uh, if you're not a daily player, try to play every three days. Uh, and on that third day, crush your, your quest. In fact, that's kind of how the econ team likes to look at modeling stuff. You got your, your daily player who's going to grind out all your stuff on the day. You got your player who's going to come in just to get their uh, goodies every three days, you know, looking at those different player types. So just to, uh, just know that if you wait to, if you've gone uh, four days without playing, you're starting to lose gold value. Mm-hmm. So make sure that you're making up for it in life happiness. Okay. If, if, yeah. that's, if that's why you're not playing, great. But, then no but, problem. But know that you're uh, losing gold on arena. Uh, always re-roll your 500s. Yeah. Reroll so, 500 every day, even if you've made progress on it. Yeah. So just get through those uh, very quickly. And then the last thing is um, your expectations, right? You want to make sure that you're setting yourself up to enjoy this the most that you can. But also, you know, you have to, the, the X factor here that is, that we, we've addressed, but haven't been able to get super deep on is your win rate, yes. your skill level. Right. That is going to change things dramatically. I've been able to go nearly infinite, right? Like I have strung together a couple of $50 purchases for months, right? I've been killing it. Like I had, I, you know, there was a point where I won four drafts, in, you know, five owed four draft or five over five one, four drafts in a row. Just bing, 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 you know, six, 12, 18, 2400 gems that I'm just piling up while I'm spending all these hours playing, right? Now, Seems optimal. Yeah, that was great, but this has started to kind of equal out, like we said, but it depends on where your particular win rate is. So make sure that you manage your expectations on that yeah. because if your skill level isn't there, you're here working on it with us on LR, you're watching Ryan's stream, you're reading articles, you're doing that kind of stuff. Great, you will get there, but your expectations shouldn't be you know, too high for yourself until you actually are to that level where you really feel comfortable with the game. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, Ryan, thanks for coming on, man. Sure. That was great. It was really, uh, I, it's, it's pretty cool that we can just sort of have you on now. Yeah. I don't need to ask anybody. No. I can just show up. I, I need just, to ask you, I guess. Yeah. Well, and, <laughs> I always say yes. Yeah, so that's an easy <laughs> one. Um, but again, uh, they can find your stream at twitch.tv slash going optimal. Yeah. Um, and, uh, Ryan, you're also on Twitter. I at am. Ryan Spain. At Ryan Spain. I also made a Twitter account for at going optimal, but I'm not really doing anything, anything on it yet. So it's they the, should if, follow you. Yeah, they should follow me at Ryan Spain. Okay, because you'll tweet when you're live and yep. stuff? Okay. Cool, and uh, good luck Thank with, you. with going optimal. Uh, I'm excited about it. I think right. it's going to be Come really join great. me. I think we're going to have fun. Yeah, I think it's going to be great. Uh, I want to remind you that this show is brought to you by Channel Fireball. Dot com. Uh, once again, I mentioned in the middle of the show, but you know, we've been talking this whole time about going optimal. And one of the best ways you can do it is by using the systems that are in place around you and the incentives say to sell your cards back to CFB because you get so much 30% trade in bonus versus the cash that you'd get on it. If you are going to spend that money on magic cards anyway, then it's just pure value. 
period. It's just 30% extra that you're getting. Now, if you need the money for something else, hey, that's different. But if if you were just going to turn around and buy a box in a month anyway, trade it in because then you can just get all this extra 30% that you can use to keep playing what ultimately can be an expensive game. It's part of the reason why we spent so much time on this episode talking about it. This stuff can get expensive and you know, this is the best game ever made and you know, you're going to want to keep playing it. I guarantee it. <laughs> so uh, check out the buy list on Channel Fireball and you can sell your rares back to them. If you want to find us on social media, I'm Marshall underscore LR. As I mentioned, Ryan is at Ryan Spain. And uh, you can find everything related to the podcast on LRcast.com. That is going to do it for the show this week. We'll see you next time. You have a sign off? You know, we could do a crack a pack now. We could do a crack. Well, I, I have a quick story I wanted to share uh, that, that was, I rem- was reminded by actually Luis. One of the things he said last week uh, about his uh, finals opponent in that uh, tough, the tough to watch pro tour, mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, but uh, that, that when communicating with him, uh, saw that he had reached out years earlier uh, uh, as a fan of, uh, of Luis's content. And when thinking about, like, why should you uh, come watch me when I'm not a pro, when there's pros you can watch? And again, it's about, like, it's where, about where you're at in your game. And I feel like uh, the, something that happened similarly, um, we had a, uh, uh, back when I was on the show, it was like 2011, and we went to Portland for the GP there. First and, GP. Yeah, my first GP, Me your too. first GP, and actually my only GP, because I had my first GP and then I started at Wizards shortly after. My second will be coming up in Portland yeah. again. Oh, hey. Uh, and uh, yeah, so I'm actually be at Portland if you want to come down and, and say hi. They're a little different now, by yeah. the way. Brace yourself. <laughs> <I'm ready. laughs> There's a lot more people. <laughs> yeah. But uh, um, I did pretty well in there. I, th- I, got, uh, I was playing for top 16 in a mm-hmm. pro tour berth, actually, in the, in the final round. I remember. Uh, but I lost to uh, James. local James Dykes. Yep. And uh, uh, he got to the pro tour and I didn't, but it was a great finish. And then we got back and uh, got a communication from one of our listeners who was super excited uh, as a, a young a teenager. Clearly, I think they were still in high school and um, uh, he he was gushing at us about uh, how he had played in his first pro, uh, per, first uh, GP at, at Portland and uh he made, he finished 20 something, you know, like he, he did great and he gave us a bunch of credit for uh, really helping up his uh, limited game really quickly. And it, cause it was a limited pro tour, not, not a surprise there, limited not pricey pro tour GP. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was great. And then uh, I, I found that uh, I ran into that. I, I think I had sent you, uh, I copied because they, oh, they communicated with me on Magic Online. They, they, they mm-hmm. actually texted me in Magic Online to communicate that. And so I copied it and sent it to you as an email and, and said, um, that's pretty cool. And I think, I can't remember how I discovered it later. Uh, but, uh, multiple years later, I ran into that, uh, post in my emails or whatever and saw who it was from. It was Jacob Wilson. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, he was now like infinite better. <laughs> yeah, than all of well, he was clearly he was better than me. I think uh, yeah. on, on, yeah. on the day of the GP, it seems super uh, talented player. But yeah. He's a super talented player, and I. But I've always that makes me feel good to know that like there are pros in the world who uh, started their climb up the mountain through the work we did and mm-hmm. through the content we made. And so even if I'm not at the top of the mountain, I'm pretty darn good at showing people the path Mm -hmm. up to the top uh, and reaching down a hand for those that are below me to to lift them up to. Yeah. So, come on. 